Today in Boulder, it's a must-win game for Colorado if the Buffaloes hope to advance to a bowl game. In the process, they look to avenge a controversial finish in Ames last season. For Iowa State, the rebuilding process has been slow under second-year coach Gene Chizik. A Big 12 win on the road would be a huge step for his young Cyclones. It's Iowa State and Colorado next on Versus. State met it was a wild finish will that be the case today we welcome you to Folsom Field in Boulder Colorado site for this afternoon's matchup with Colorado and Iowa State hello again everybody along with Kelly Stoffer I'm Ron Thulin this is the time of year where coaches try to find a positive aspect of their ball club in order to build on for next season now Kelly with that in mind neither Gene Chizik of Iowa State or Dan Hawkins of Colorado have shied away about the importance of this game today well, there's no question it's very important for two different reasons Colorado desperately needs this way win if they want to go to a bowl game Iowa State needs any way to find a way to win in conference on the road well, let's talk about the youth of today's game because we are going to be seeing a lot of the young players of both teams and for Colorado it really starts at quarterback two young but talented guys you're right you see the quarterback rotation going on right now at Colorado you see Cody Hawkins the grizzled vet he's a sophomore and the true freshman Tyler Hansen will get the start today but both of these teams play a lot of young players this is just one example of it Iowa State plays young players as well the young guns a lot of starters this season you can see the starters here today what we'll see Ron is spectacular plays but sometimes boneheaded plays in back-to-back -back series because of the youthful mistakes. Well Iowa State's youth is going to be tested by the crowd and Colorado's youngsters begin the stretch run to a bowl. Let's go down to the field and check out the Under Armour. The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click clack. I think the air is coming. College football on Versus is brought to you by Under Armour Performance Trainers, the first performance training footwear at the Sports Authority. Ted Robinson, Roland Williams at College Football Central. Texas trying to rebound. After two offensive scores, this pick six off the tipped ball by Ryan Palmer. Texas with the lead, but Roe Colt McCoy, two touchdown passes already. Yeah, the offense has been doing well, but defensively, they got to get better. Ranked 117th in pass defense. They got to get better on Texas side of football. Highlights and updates on all the Big 12 action on College Football Central on Versus at the half. Now back to Ron. All right, thank you very much, Ted. Is it, a, it is a beautiful day in Boulder, Colorado, and just a few moments ago, Gene Chizik of Iowa State was firing up his troops. When we walk off this field, I want you to know, not for you and not for anybody but your teammates, you played with as much energy and as much passion as you have in the depth of your bones to make sure that you take ownership in this win, you hear me? Yes, sir. You will take ownership in this win. And if you play with passion and emotion, men, and it ain't about you today, it's about your teammate, you will win this football game, yes, and we will get on that plane, and you will have a victory today, man. Yes, but hey, yeah. this cannot be about you, man. This is. Got All right, Gene Chizik, head coach at Iowa State, trying to snap that seven game losing streak. On the other side of the football, we are going to get a chance this afternoon to see one of the most highly recruited tailbacks in the country last season, Daryl Scott of Colorado. With more on that, here's Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Ron, Colorado freshman running back Daryl Scott came in as the number one recruit in the nation in his position. It was a big catch for the Buffaloes. But when he got here, he was a little bit out of shape. He was overweight. And in the end, he was outplayed by another freshman running back, 
uh, Rodney Stewart. Now, Stewart would have, was having a pretty solid season until last weekend in a loss against Texas A&M where he fractured his lower leg, his fibula. So now he's out for the season. And so today it falls back on the shoulders of that star recruit, Daryl Scott. Now, offensive coordinator Mark Helfrich told, told us that he's been talking with Scott all week, and he has simply invited him to unleash himself today. But the reality is, Ron, that Colorado needs this young man to step up, have a big game. And as I talked to him after warm-ups, uh, Scott seemed to be confident but he knew I could just tell in his face that really a lot of their offense is going to fall on his shoulders and that he had to get it done injured or not Ron? Yeah, absolutely Lewis good report because uh, this young man is being counted on by his Colorado teammates Iowa State won the toss they have deferred Grant Mahoney the freshman out of Marion Iowa set to kick it away and this will be Josh Smith out of Moore Park California from about the three he's got a block up over the 30 up over the going to be corralled at the 45 yard line as a penalty flag comes in looks like it'll be a face mask 42 yards on the return by Smith who had a 93 yard return for a touchdown earlier this year against Colorado State and as we listen to Randy Crystal give us the personal call. foul face mask number 20 first and 10 now the Colorado offense coming off their best performance of the year last week versus A&M. There's Tyler Hansen, the true freshman out of California. Just three weeks ago, his red shirt was pulled. The reason being he can run the football. He's got over 200 yards rushing already. Good look at him. 6'2", 210 pounds. Daryl Scott is behind him in the backfield. Great field position from the Iowa State 41. Ryer Greer moving around, and we'll probably have a motion penalty. Dead ball, false start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty, first down. Nate Solder is the uh, culprit on that. The line, really, only six mm -hmm. offensive linemen expected to play today for the Buffaloes. They've lost three to injury. Daniel Sanders in the middle is the bell cow. Skill position, keep an eye on number one, Josh Smith, at wide receiver. Along with Scott, he's been challenged by the coaches saying, you've got to step up today. The second least penalized team in the Big 12 come up with their first penalty of the day. There's Scott. Not much. Jesse Smith on the stop. Iowa State defense, they've struggled stopping people on the line. Parker, Tate, Freer, and Taylor. Freer is having an outstanding year from that nose guard spot in the Bell is going to be getting the start because Michael Bibbs is banged up. Second down and 12. Benson keeps it. Down in the tie, the 35 yard line, and he is hit hard by James Smith coming up from that free safety spot. James Smith is going to be that free safety that has to fill the alley. It's just like running. Defense in the triple option, the free safety safety has to take that quarterback as he gets around the edge. Barons and Scott now in the backfield on third down. We'll call it about three. Hanson looking, jumping it off. Barons cannot get his hands on it. And this is a dicey situation for Colorado because, quite frankly, their field goal kicking is horrendous. <laughs> It does influence the play calling in this situation, no doubt about it. But that's a good demonstration of what has been killing Colorado all year. Youthful mistakes, a play to be made, you have to make it to move the chains, and Barron just puts the ball on the ground. And that'll be bring up a fourth down situation from the 35-yard line. They're calling it three. It's probably closer to four. And this is kind of no man's land in kicking field goals anyway. This may not be an influence because of the bad field goal kicking this year. You don't gain much by putting right. the football right here either. That's a little play action. He's got some running room. Should get the first down, and he does. Run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. That is the reason that he is playing exactly. right now at quarterback. You're right. He has the ability to do this, but Cody Hawkins really doesn't at this point in time. The read option, he's going to throw the football, and then it's just a matter of athleticism and getting around the end. That's what Iowa State is going to have to watch out for today. Colorado has a true dual threat in Tyler Hansen. They've increased what coaches call his toolbox. In other words, the number of plays that he has to remember. About a little dipsy-doo. Here it comes, a little reverse. Smith 
And he is going to be hog-tied at the 30-yard line. That'll be a loss of five on the play. Nice defensive effort by Christopher Lyle, the junior out of Waldorf, Maryland, holding his position and making the tackle. Yeah, once again, Colorado has been challenged in terms of getting points, and this is the kind of thing you do to try to get points. The double reverse, but you're counting on Tyler Hansen to be out on the edge, blocking the defensive end, Christopher Lyle, and obviously that's not a good matchup if you're a Hawkeye. Well, that first down has been a problem for Colorado this year. They have the fourth lowest first down yardage in the FBS right now. They lost four officially on that. Hanson, the keeper, right up the middle. Tries the hook slide, but he still takes a hit by Chris Brown from that safety spot, but not before he gets down to about the 21-yard line. Ron, if you watch Iowa State today, they have been giving up a lot of run yards in the run, about 180 on the per game on the season thus far. They play a lot of cover two because they have two freshmen, mm -hmm. two freshman corners that they try to protect, but it removes your, your safeties from the line of scrimmage and they can't fill in that run game as quickly. 26 yards rushing on three carries already for Hanson. Looking for some time. Now he's going to just have to throw it away. He was not out of the tackle box, and that exactly. was close because it barely got by the line of scrimmage. You're right. It barely got by the line of scrimmage. He's not out of the tackle box, but the good news is he had a receiver somewhat in the vicinity. Christopher Lyle, who's already having a pretty good game, is the one that was putting pressure on him. And they're going to have to try the field goal once again. You can see wow. the percentage lowest in the FBS. And this is going to be from the 27 yard line. This is Jamison Davis, the freshman. Ball's down, kick is up. And it is no good. We'll make it 4 of 13. Next time they may go for it in that situation. That's how bad field goal kicking influences play calling. Well, Jamison Davis made his only field goal of the year last week against a &M. He misses this one, and we're scoreless in Colorado. Let's take a look at the Craftsman Tools for Success. Well, Colorado, as uh, Lewis already pointed out, Daryl Scott needs to produce today. Maybe more of a breakout type of game. Iowa State, they not only have to move the ball, they have to score points when they move the football. Both defenses have to get the offenses to third and long. And Ron, make a play to get off the field. Okay. It's one of their mottos coming into this game is finishing drives. They've only scored on one opening drive this whole year. That was versus West Virginia. And they come up empty on their opener today after the missed 38-yard field goal. And here's Austin Arnott for Iowa State. He'll put up his first play over the middle, caught over the 40-yard line to the 42-yard line to Colin Franklin, his 11th catch of the year. And this is play action passing out of that shotgun formation right there is to influence the linebacker to throw over top of the middle linebacker in that two deep coverage. That's exactly the way you want to attack that defense. 23 yards on the pickup. One of the things that Iowa State Offensive coordinator Robin McFarland said we have to do is come up with big momentum plays early. Over the left side on the ground, Alexander Robinson. Iowa State's offensive line, kind of like Colorado, a little mix and match on the O-line. Only Diedrich and Stevens have started every game. And in the skill position, Robinson, a running back we just saw, he's running with authority. He's got better vision. And one of the things you look at him, the coaches say, we got to get him more touches. Second down and five. Austin Arnaud, the sophomore out of Ames, Iowa, had a career day versus AM. He trips, balls loose on the ground, and I think Robinson got it back. Take a look at the Colorado defense, number one of the conference in pass defense. Nicholas and Hippolyte, they clogged the middle very well. The linebackers, Moeller, Smart, and Jones. Jones is also going to be moving around and down to the defensive end spot. The DBs are solid with McKay, Walter, Dykes, and Brown. And Ron, look for Colorado tries to force the running game back inside to their strength, which you talked about is Nicholas and Hippolyte inside, and also their free safety, Ryan mm -hmm. Walters, is a great run blitzer. On third and five, Colorado brings five. Pass off the hands of Darks, incomplete. And a penalty flag is down that may be interference. That'll be the second, a holding call, I think, against Colorado. Second penalty against the Buffaloes today. Well, Ryan Walters kind of had his hand on the back of Darks right at the end of that play. 
I didn't know it was enough to be called, but apparently it was. Pass interference, defense, spot foul, automatic first down. But that's how Colorado is going to use the free safety in pass coverage. Ryan Walters likes to get around the line of scrimmage to blitz the run game anyway, but he also takes the slot receiver a lot of times in the passing game. A fresh set of downs for the Cyclones. Come in averaging just over 25 and a half points a game, next to last in the Big 12. Arnott has some time, rifles the pass to the 40 yard line to Darks. Let's check in with Ted Robinson, College Football Central on versus Ted. Well, Ron Colton McCoy back in shape. Third touchdown pass of the first half, second to Quan Cosby. McCoy now 26 touchdown passes, just six picks. Texas by 14 at the half, Ron. And don't forget about the Longhorns in that BCS yeah. picture. I'm telling you, Texas Tech still has to go to Norman to play the Sooners. Well, and they've, of course, they've got Oklahoma State tonight at AT&T Stadium in Lubbock. Second down. Robinson right up the middle has got running room. Inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line for the sophomore from Minneapolis. 17 yards on the pickup. And Ron, this is what we started to see out of Iowa State the last two weeks, that zone running scheme up front. Robinson is getting a very good feel, and also that offensive line that hasn't had a lot of continuity up front is getting a better feel for one another. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're getting a better fit up front on that defensive line of scrimmage. They were able to run the football against Oklahoma State in the first half last week, but they shot themselves in the foot a couple times. Here's Robinson, bounces to the outside, reaches across down to the 18-yard line, a pickup of four for Robinson, averaging four and a half yards a carry this year. And Ron, they, Iowa State didn't make some changes up front like we pointed out. Richie Stevens, who started at right guard the last few weeks, is over on the left side. Mm -hmm. Brandon Johnson, number 60, is at the right guard position out of where, Ron? Rushville, Nebraska. That's not a bad place to come from. <laughs> and he started a lot of games the last couple of years at center, and now he moves over to right guard. Shameless hometown plug. Got to get it in. Robinson, oh, what a move again. He's getting what they call cyclone yards. Gene Chizik told us this last year. That's when they get hit. It's basically yards after contact. But he's doing a good job of bouncing off people this season. Yeah, all good running backs are patient and they have vision. Right now, you know that you have a lead blocker, number 84, Derek Catlett. You have to wait for that block to, to seal the defensive man and then you have to cut up inside and right now Robinson is very patient and seeing things very well 34 yards running the football already for Robinson they go to the option this time Colorado closes that short side of the field quickly maybe gets down to the nine yard line a pickup of about three on the play Jalil Brown from that quarterback spot making the stop and Ron another thing to keep in mind if Iowa State likes to run that zone read scheme from the shotgun but rest assured that Austin Arnott is not going to keep the ball very mm -hmm. much they do not want him exposed to contact so look for him to give that ball to Robinson more in that scheme now they go with a three wide receiver set to the left here comes the blitz Arnott reaches it and he gets down to about the six yard line he needs to get to the two for the first down so it'll be third down and about four Chappelle Brown is the one that kind of came in and just disrupted that play now we saw Arnod take a shot a couple of weeks ago he was slow yeah. to get up and the coaches have told us he is banged up and at times if there would have been a backup quarterback he wouldn't be playing right. he's played with a bum shoulder maybe a couple of shoulders the last few weeks but he wants to assume the leadership role on this team meaning that you don't come out unless you absolutely have to third down and six they're going for six into the end zone incomplete And Iowa State trying to run play action off their physical run game that they've already established on this drive, but that was really a bad read. Tight end going to the back of the end zone on his corner route was very well covered. Come to your secondary receiver or throw the ball away. That had a chance to get picked off in the end zone. Well, Graham Mahoney is going to attempt a 24-yard field goal, the freshman. He's 13 of 20 this season, one for two from this distance. He has had a solid rookie year. Ball's down, the kick, and it splits the upright. So Colorado misses a field goal, but Iowa State connects. 
in the first. The Cyclones lead the Buffaloes. Good crowd on hand. A beautiful day for football in Boulder, Colorado. 3 0. Iowa State leading the Buffaloes. Along with Kelly Stoffer, Lewis Johnson, I'm Ron Thulin. Colorado has lost two straight, five of six. They still have their hopes on a possible bowl game. They're at four and five on the year. Of course, last year they lost to Alabama in the Independence Bowl, but they came on strong at the end of the season. What a game they ended the season with by coming back oh, yeah. to beat Nebraska. They're almost in the same situation again this season. Once again, Josh Smith, who had an outstanding opening kickoff, returned to start the football game. This time he's about six yards deep. He's bringing it out. Blocking set up to the left side. He finds a little bit of it. Hesitates, gets up to the 20. So a lot of running and another penalty yeah, flag. It's going to be in. another face mask again. Just about exactly like the last yeah. kick return by Smith. Randy. These are those hidden yards, Ron, mm -hmm. that Iowa State just cannot afford to give up. When you have an offense in Colorado that has had trouble moving the ball and getting points on the board, you don't want to give them field position they didn't Personal deserve. Personal foul, face mask, number 91. It'll be a 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, in that last drive, we had a chance to see tight end Colin Franklin make a reception. This isn't his only talent, ladies and gentlemen. He is now officially named the Piano Man. I'm Colin Franklin, the tight end from Iowa State, and I've been playing the piano since I was about seven years old. Colin needed to do something uh, <laughs> a little bit more than just play piano. He needs to catch some more passes today. Outstanding talent, though, by Colin Franklin. By the way, Hanson just got sacked. That is the 25th sack against Colorado this year. Iowa State's defense trying to close again on the freshman. Loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. Keller, are you a piano player? No, I'm not. Okay. And I'm, I'm not a tight end that catches the ball down the middle either, so I think that balances out. For My daughter plays the piano, and I like to listen to it, but no, I do not play. Well, he has the total look. He's got that yummy yeah. look. Working. He does. He does. That seemed to work right there. Now, we could have gone down there and, and sing for him with the piano. Oh, yeah. Sing solo, right? solo, nobody can hear us. Third down and 11 now for the Buffaloes from the 35-yard line. A very small play fake. Hanson throws it to nobody in particular. <laughs> Loss of communication there with Patrick yeah. Williams, a senior out of DeSoto. And that's what Mark Helfrich was telling us yesterday. Yeah. He said, you know, sometimes we look good, but sometimes our guys are on different pages. Well, you just described young football players. I mean, that's the symptoms of being young, playing this game, learning what it's all about at this level. That was a miscommunication. You have a receiver that's either going to run a stop route, turn around at 12 yards, or a fade route, and the quarterback and receiver were not on the same page. In Colorado, who's also had trouble with their punting. Swazo kicking it away, and this is an end over end. Iowa State just gets away from it. What a roll. It goes out inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. No style points on punting because it covers 57 yards. One of the most picturesque settings in all of college wow. football, Boulder, Colorado. That Those are the flat irons right behind us, and we have a very daring person. And I had to make sure our spotter and staff person, Sam Polis, was still in the booth with us because Sammy's we come here. up there. He's always up there. He's one of those guys that does Did they that. Have any like ropes tied to him or anything? Does that not look like on a sheer cliff? They better Am I have missing a, something. They, they better have a concession stand up there for me. Okay, here's Iowa State. Not good field position. It's down at about the eight-yard line. Robinson still in a tailback for the Cyclones. Arnaud looks, floats a pass, tip incomplete at the 25-yard line, intended for R.J. Sumrall, the senior out of Orlando, Florida, who's having a pretty good year. Jimmy Smith was on the coverage. You know, one of the things Iowa State's offense did after the Kansas game, they had to almost retool their offense. Basically, Robert McFarlane, the coordinator, said, we got to find out what we do best. They cut back a little bit on their offense. Tried to simplify it. Second down and 10. The running game on the left side. 
not much. Well, the only way to beat them is to ride them. The rankest bull on the planets are unleashed, and for the Cowboys who try to hang on, their fate is decided every eight seconds. A million dollar purse awaits the rider who can tame the beast at the PBR World Finals live from Las Vegas. A champion will be crowned. Coverage continues tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern right here on Versus. I'd rather climb mountains and do that, Ron. <laughs> Third down and nine, and the crowd has gotten loud. Here comes the pressure. Arnaud steps up in the pocket. Dangerous pass. Tipped and incomplete. Chappelle Brown, the junior out of California, was on the coverage. It was intended for darks. But Brown doing a nice job. His ninth pass broken up this year. Colorado doing a nice job knowing that it's a passing situation. They went cover two, played good coverage underneath. Even though it's a zone, Brown did a nice job of pressing in on the receiver darks in his territory and breaking up that pass. Mike Brantner in his own end zone. No rush as Josh Smith awaits the kick. Backing up to the 43, goes to the right. The wall setting up, my friends. Spinning away, still on his feet, inside the 35, down to the 32-yard line. Well, we saw the Bulls, but Lewis has more on the Bison, the Buffalo, Lewis. Yeah, yeah Ron, you know they have the PVR in Vegas, but we got Buffaloes here in Boulder. Now, right before the game, it's tradition, you're going to see Ralphie running around the field like crazy, dragging people around. Well, it was Ralphie 5 that we saw out there on the field today. There is a Ralphie 4 which is mainly used for appearances, uh, more docile, easy to be petted, and just, you know, just more of an easier animal. But five is the one right now that's running. Two years old, just had a birthday in October. And we forgot a card. Scott on the run. By the way, it's, it's an American bison, not right. necessarily buffalo. We started calling them buffalo, but it's an American bison. You're absolutely right. Water buffalo, as in over in Africa somewhere, and there's a buffalo. That's an American bison, but we'll go ahead and call it buffalo. I thought Lewis was going to be on Ralphie. I misunderstood what we talked about in our production meeting. Yeah. I thought Lewis was going to be on Ralphie. Couldn't convince him to run with yeah. Ralphie. Scott and Barron's in the backfield. Good first down run by Scott, and he'll try it again. Inside the 25-yard line, down to the 24-yard line. Now, Lewis, we understand that there is Ralphie 4. He's been the mascot since 98. Ralphie 5, first game this year was against Eastern Washington, but we have never seen Ralphie 4 and 5 in the same venue. Is there really a Ralphie 4 and 5, or is there just one and they're kidding us? No, they assured me. I talked to the guys before the game. They assured me that 4 is sort of almost out to pasture, really more for appearances, but 5 is there. And, and by the way, Kelly, there is no way in the world I've become a YouTube video, YouTube video riding that animal. On third down, Scott ducks his head, bounces off one tackle. He's got the first down down to the 17-yard line. That's what the Colorado Buffalo fans are wanting to see. Much heralded. Scott has to be aggressive at the point of attack. Use your vision, use your instincts, loosen up a little bit, and just let it flow. You talked about, Lewis talked about, they invite him to have a breakout game. Well, this is it. But you have to just throw it to the wall and see what happens. Second first down for Colorado this afternoon. Hanson keeps it, spins away, still on his feet. Nice running ability. Gets down to about the 10-yard line. Ball is down. Jesse Smith, the middle linebacker out of Altoona, Iowa, South East Polk High School on the stop. We'll be calling his name a lot today. Ron, what you're going to see out of Iowa State today is they like their base defense is really a four-man front, kind of a 4-3 concept. Mix in some three-man line on passing situations. They like to zone blitz and play cover two behind that mm -hmm. to protect their young quarters, as we already talked about. Second down short, about four. Plenty of time to snap it. Scott hit right at the line of scrimmage. We saw Nate Solder trying to finish his block from that left tackle spot. But it looked like Michael Tate from that defensive tackle spot, the senior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, got the best of him. And we also saw the young freshman corner, number 23, Leonard Johnson, sneaking in from his corner position. And that's a time where you want to run away from that. If you're a young quarterback and Tyler Hansen, check to the other side when you see a blitz into the face of your run game. And lost a couple, sets up a third down and five. Colorado stalled the last time they had the ball down this end. 
Hanson looking. Here comes the pressure. Eludes it. Still looking. He's in trouble, and he's going to have to wisely throw it out of bounds. Nobody was there. And again, they stall on third down. James Smith is the one that was chasing Hanson all over the place. Are we going to kick a field goal here, Ron, or are we going to well, go for you. something here on fourth down? I Remember, field goal situation's been an adventure, to say the least. Four of 13 thus far in the year. You know, in, in, in talking to Mark Helfrich, the offensive coordinator, I said, that has to put pressure on your third down calls. He said, absolutely it does. And now Jamison Davis, who missed a 38-yarder in the first drive, this one is going to cover 29. And that is not even close. Oh, my goodness. Four for 13 on the year. Colorado kicking field goals. It's kind of like your golf swing. Once it gets in your head, you're not, not quite sure where this goes at this point in time. That was a chili dipper, as Sam has pointed out here in the booth. And I think that's what you get right now. And kickers sometimes wrong I think have a tendency to overthink things yeah. and I think that's what's happening right now with the young Davis obviously he's trying to get it done but it's just not happening well Eric Goodman was their field goal kicker the sophomore out of Cherry Hills Village Colorado and he had seven consecutive misses that's why Davis is in there I wouldn't be surprised if we see Goodman come back in Iowa State on first down will lose a yard Brandon Nicholas, the penetration. Iowa State, they said they've added some plays to get big gains. They wanted it early. We haven't seen them yet. You know, going back to Colorado, they left a lot of points on the board in that first half versus Texas A&M. And they're leaving points on the field again. Colorado shows blitz on second and 11, and the run blitz is Ryan Walters. Let's get a Big Ten update from Ted at College Football Central on versus. All right, Rumble, Ohio State's trying to stay in the BCS mix. Terrell Pryor here evades and winds up throwing his second touchdown pass of the day. Beanie Wells well over 100 yards and Ohio State pounding Northwestern. Back to Ron and Kelly. All right, Ted, thanks. Ted will keep us posted on scores throughout the day. And, of course, at halftime, scores and highlights. And College Football Central on versus. And, Ron, this is one of the keys to the game. Get the offense in third and long, but you have to finish it and make a play to get off the field. Only a four-man rush. Pass is complete. Back to the original line of scrimmage to Dart. Ryan Walters, four tackles on the afternoon. And Iowa State's going to be forced to kick it away. And again, they don't have good field position, can't move the football. And a good job that time by Colorado's defense to maintain that field position even after the missed field goal. You want your defense to hold serve and try to prevent the offense from flipping the field, i.e. create better field position for the opposition. Rattner's first punt covered 48 yards. And I think we've got a timeout called. And that's the end of the first quarter. So we have played 15 minutes, and Gene Chizik's squad has got a field goal, and that's the difference here in Boulder, Colorado. Iowa State has not won a road game since October 29, 2005, when they beat the Aggies of Texas A&M. They've lost 15 consecutive away from Ames, second longest streak behind UAB. They're trying to snap that today after one quarter of play. They lead the Buffaloes of Colorado, 3 to nothing. Kelly Stauffer, Lewis Johnson, Ron Thulin with you in Boulder, Colorado. And when you're talking about young football players and building a program with young players, sometimes the last thing to come around is how to win on the road, and it becomes more difficult when you're talking about conference road games mm -hmm. as well. Brandner, his second kick, first one 58, penalty flag is thrown. Brantner took quite a hit. The rush was on. Iowa State with an unusual formation. Foul, roughing the kicker, number 13. He got the plant leg. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, that is roughing. It's not running in, so that's the big penalty. So that's an automatic first down. Here it is. Patrick Mankey, it looks like, is the one who hits him. A backup yeah. strong safety. Yeah, it was not number 13. It was obviously number 12 right there. And you see the personal protectors up front. 
The first Colorado Buffalo tries to blow that up, and the second one was Mankey coming in and just took a wrong angle. Took yeah. out the right leg of the punter. And that is something the officials have been talking about this year. That's almost a defensive player, a defenseless player hitting that plant leg. That's a tough one. Third penalty already on Colorado when it's hurt them. But Iowa State, a fresh set of downs in the second. Little mix up. Arnott putting a little sugar in that lemonade out of the lemons. Walters on the stop. And the little mix up was actually Arnott turned the wrong way. Was going to run the zone read out of the gun once again. And actually, Robinson was supposed to get that fake, and Arnott came to the wrong side. Bad mistake by the sophomore quarterback. Well, he was able to pick up three, second down and seven. Sumrall goes wide to the right. Robinson and Catlett in the backfield. Here comes the blitz by Colorado. Iowa State picks it up. Nice job defensively. Jimmy Smith getting the hand on it. On any given Saturday, anything can happen. And last year, in one of the most stunning upsets in college football history, the Stanford Cardinal took down the best team in the nation, the Trojans of USC. Now the long-awaited rematch. USC Stanford, Saturday, November 15th, versus college football. It's wild out here. And we will be there, and the little buffalo won't be. Keeps the head warm, though. <laughs> Sit down, buddy. We're trying to shoot the little kid. <laughs> Third down and seven. I Iowa State 0 for 3 on third down today. Arnott stepping up in the pocket. Nice job, Colorado. They try to wrap him up. He will be about four short of the first down. Let's go to College Football Central on versus for an update. All right, Rob, well, you can tell what field this is, can't you? The Blue Turf in Boise. And Boise State trying to stay in BCS Buster mode. Kellen Moore to Austin Pettis on the first Boise State possession for the quick lead. Ron? All right, thank you, Ted. Boise State's challenge is going to come on the road to Nevada mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks and then in the end of the year with Fresno State. Brantler's kick. Again, he goes down, and there's another flag. I think that's going to be running into the kicker. I don't know if it'll be roughing. Well, running in will be There's enough. Still another first down. Yeah, yeah. Fourth and about four yards. Fourth and three. Running officially. into the kicker. Five yards in. Wow. Running into the kicker. Five yard penalty. It's sufficient for a first down. The special teams have been an adventure for the Buffaloes on the year, but not in this way, Ron. Talk about punting and talking about missed field goals, but. Running into the punter twice on the same drive. That's a new one for Coach Hawkins. Well, Kent Riddle, the special teams coach of Colorado, spent a lot of time on this yesterday in practice of covering punts and going after the punter. You're talking about, as you mentioned, one of the least penalized team mm -hmm. in all the land. Well, Colorado averaged only about six penalties a ball game, and they've got four already today. And the flip side is Iowa State needs to do something yeah. with this new life. Let's see if they go for the big one. Arnott has running room. Tries to slide, but caught from behind at the 40-yard line by Jeff Smart, but not before he picked up five on the play. I think you made a great point there, Kelly. But their margin of error, and Gene Chiswick has told us this the entire year, is so small, they've got to take advantage when things present themselves. You're absolutely right, and that was a good example. You talked about going for all of it right there. Robert McFarlane, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State, was going for one of those six to seven shot plays that he talked about. They like it especially mm -hmm. after turnovers. Surprised they haven't taken shots downfield yet. Robinson, who ran well in the opening drive, gets the first down inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Smart and Smith on the stop. One of the things I think that Colorado has to do defensively right now is make the adjustment understanding this. The quarterback, Austin Arnott, is not wanting to carry the football, mm -hmm. nor do they want him to carry the football. They don't want to have to have him exposed to big hits. Right now, Colorado is making it easy. They're allowing him to pitch to the un undefended runner in that zone scheme. First down, Robinson. Straight up the middle over the 30 as a penalty fly comes flying in. And it'll probably be a hold from where that was thrown. Randy Crystal, the referee, tossed the yellow. 
holding offense, number 77. It's a 10 yard penalty, first down. Alex Alvarez, the sophomore out of League City, Texas, who's had to man that center position. He was not expected to start, but Mike Knapp, the starting center, he's been banged up. He had an appendicitis attack and had his appendix removed, and he's not back in the lineup now. Well, now Alvarez certainly didn't need to hold. Fullback number 84, Derek Catlett, was double teaming with Alvarez on mm -hmm. that play. No reason to get called for a hold. And it was a spot foul, so it is first and 17 now. Robinson, another penalty flag on the far side, right in front of Colorado's bench. And I think R.J. Summerall, the wide receiver, was maybe in motion before that play, and no excuse. He's a veteran wide receiver that should know better than that. Illegal formation, offense, not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, first down. And actually, it was Summerall that was off the line of scrimmage, I believe, on that. Well, here are the Papa John's conference leaders. How about this? Yeah. Pass defense, you're number one in the conference, but you're 72nd in college football. You're right. You see Iowa State down there at, at number nine as well. But that's the big question about the Big 12. Can you play defense? Yeah, you can score on anybody, but can you stop the opponent? First down and 22. Nice job by the defense of Colorado, allowing a very short gain. Darks held up by Jimmy Smith. Pickup of about four out of the play. You know, Iowa State, again, they had the two penalties. They yeah. had good field position. Then they, they backed themselves up. You know, they, they, they've got to take advantage of this yeah. situation. You're talking about two teams that have young players everywhere, but particularly on the offensive side, inconsistent at moving the ball, in inconsistent at finishing drives, and this is the reason why. Take advantage of what's given mm -hmm. to you. Second and 17, Arnaud's pass overthrown. Outstretched hands of Houston Jones, the junior out of Northeast Academy in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Ron, what Colorado is doing defensively is they're forcing Arnaud to come underneath to receivers. That time, he really forced that one over the top. Defensive back Jimmy Smith was in that cover two. He's rolled up in the flat, but nobody was in the flat. He continues to get depth. There was no room to get that football in there. Iowa State looking for their first third down conversion. They're 0 for 4. Seven men on the line of scrimmage for Colorado, and here comes the blitz. They bring the house. Pass off the hands, incomplete. Smith thought he had it, and he could have had six. Colorado is not messing around defensively, certain passing situation. They're bringing the house after Arnaud. Why? Because Colorado is not fearful of any of the wide receivers for Iowa State. There's nobody out wide that the Buffaloes fear here today. Four penalties on that drive, two on each team. Let's see if Iowa State may fake it. Colorado only brings one. And Brantner's punt, end over end. Smith hit right at the 12, and he'll go down. 33 yards on the kick, zero on the return. We are in the second, 3 0 Iowa State. An absolutely cool city is Boulder, Colorado. Who's that guy there? Chauncey Billups. Made his debut last night for George Carl's Denver Nuggets as they beat the Dallas Mavericks. And of course, he's played for Colorado. Second stint with the Nuggets. Well, Iowa State on that last drive, 12 plays, 35 yards, had it for six minutes and 10 seconds, came up empty. They punted, and on the punt, there was a personal foul penalty on Jalil Brown, and that made it half the distance to the goal line, so that's where Colorado takes over, first and 10. They are on about the five-yard line. Make it the five and a half. And the backed up mentality is another thing the young quarterback has to learn in Tyler Hansen. Don't make the big mistake. You want a first down to try to create some field position, but don't make the big mistake. They've had problems with center quarterback exchanges this year. Looking over. Most of the time, he's just changing the route. Ten to snap. Scott. Able to get out of the hole a little, little bit, close to the 10-yard line. James Smith with six tackles already for Iowa State. 
the junior out of Council Bluffs, Iowa. Ron Tyler Hansen, remember last week, was backed up against Texas A&M one time and drove his team 98 right. yards for a touchdown. So the young man has responded well in similar situations. Once again, this Colorado offense banged up. Lost two starters on the offensive line. They've been mixing and matching this year. Trying to get some kind of surge. Second down and eight. Williams in motion. The handoff to Scott. And he is corralled and probably going to lose a yard on the play. Nate Freer has three tackles. And Nate Freer has been the most consistent defensive lineman up front. Wayne Bolt told us that really a pleasant surprise, maybe the most improved player up front, but certainly the most consistent. And we have an Iowa State player down. Looks like Josh Raven, a junior out of Fort Myers, Florida. Now he was backing up Cameron Bell, who was starting in place of Michael Bibbs, who was hurt. This would be a huge blow to Wayne Bolt's defense. We'll take a break. Josh Raven, the injured player, came off the field under his own power, so that's good news. He is expected to come back in as Colorado now faces third and ten. Five straight games this offense has scored less than 20 points in six of their last seven. They face third down and ten now from the five-yard line. And Iowa State has to remember Tyler Hansen's ability to run the football in situations like this. Good call. Hansen's got time. Pass. Pop. Up over the 25 to the 30-yard line, Patrick Williams. They'll mark him down at the 32-yard line. The senior out of DeSoto, Texas, the former high school quarterback. This is a big physical receiver, and coaches say if this young man can only play with a little more confidence, he's got the talent. And that's really what Colorado needs offensively is some big play type of wide receivers to show up a little bit, and Williams certainly can be one of those, and Tyler Hansen will be on the benefiting end of that if he has some receivers that can create some consistent separation. First completion for Hanson, one of five now throwing the football. Scott gets stood up at the 33-yard line. Let's go back to that throw by Tyler Hanson, the true freshman as he hooked up with Patrick Williams. I think Tyler Hanson did a nice job. Look how definitive he is in his decision making right there. He stayed to one side. He didn't have his first look. He waited for his second look and Patrick Williams to come open. A good job of just simplifying things. Mm -hmm. Stay with one. He's not there. Go to two. Throw a nice confident ball. Good job moving the chains. Now Williams and McKnight go wide to the left. Williams one catch away from 100 for his career. Iowa State shows the blitz. Hanson over the middle, pass, caught at the 45-yard line, another first down. Cody Crawford, the senior out of San Diego, California, who looks like, I hate to say it, Greg Brady. I think uh, Chris Brown that came up to try to blow Crawford up is actually still down on the ground on this, but a good job, Tyler Hanson. A little bit of green grass to run, but keep your head downfield, find your open receiver as he does in Cody Crawford on that play. But once again, I think it's Chris Brown who started at strong safety today to try to create some momentum in that secondary is still on the on the ground. Pickup of 12. Hansen awaits the timeout. We'll take a timeout too. Be back in a minute. <laughs> Buffalo fans still have hopes of going to a bowl game. And so do the quarterbacks who also have an incredible friendship, believe it or not, Cody Hawkins, number yeah. seven, and Tyler Hansen. And, you know, talking to uh, Dan Hawkins yesterday, and he said, listen, Cody understands the situation. Yeah. Cody gets it. He's a team player. And rest assured, this wouldn't work if Cody Hawkins wasn't on board. Exactly. Well, Cody wants to be a coach, and if he does choose that profession, I would venture to say it's going to be a good one. Here's Hansen. Shows his athletic ability. Gets another first down. One of the things that offensive coordinator Mark Helfrich told us yesterday is that they've got to allow Tyler Hansen to use his athleticism. They want him to be athletic. Yeah, and the way you do that, there. Ron, is you free his mind at the line of scrimmage. Young players get freer at the line of scrimmage. They get freer because of the play calling. They understand it, and their feet get faster. Their decision-making gets better, and that's what they want to see today out of Tyler Hansen. Another first down. Seven rushes, 43 yards for Hansen. This time he comes up with nothing. Let's check in with Ted Robinson, our college football central on Versus Studio. Well, Ron, everything's fine now for the Longhorns. Colt McCoy again in action. His fourth touchdown pass of the day to Brandon Collins, which 
which spots the question, Ron and Kelly, how is Oklahoma ranked ahead of Texas right now? <laughs> Good question. That's You're a, talking to one of the voters yeah. right here, and I'll ask him that question here in a little bit when we have a chance to talk about I'll, it. I'll answer it. As a Harris poll voter, no. Texas is uh, not behind Oklahoma in my poll. Can't be. Here's Hanson. Has plenty of time. Now he's got some problems. Throws it into the flat. It's going to be intercepted. Second interception in two consecutive games for Iowa State. This is after going a long stretch without one. Leonard Johnson, the true freshman. This is a talented young man, but Hanson just poor decision. You're exactly right. And watch number 29, Rashawn Parker, right here. Keep Hanson in the pocket. That's where you have to keep young quarterbacks. Make them make decisions in the pocket where the bullets are flying. And that's what they did. Iowa State did on that play. And then Leonard Johnson was just in the right place at the right time and picked that ball off. Now can Iowa State take advantage of it? They haven't been able to take advantage of situations as Scales is running the football. Tyler Hansen goes over to the phone to talk upstairs to coordinator Mark Helfrich. And Ron, that's one of the things you do as a defense. If you're facing a young quarterback, keep him in the pocket. Everything seems more chaotic mm -hmm. in the pocket. If you can get young quarterbacks to the edge, they generally make better decisions because they can see it more clearly and the field is cut in half. Cedric Johnson now wide to the right. We still haven't seen the big play potential that Iowa State talked about earlier this week. Out in the flat, he doesn't get a block. That is Cedric Johnson, the true freshman. 16 catches on the year. Lewis, what's the Iowa State sideline like? All right, well, look, that, uh, that interception recharged and energized the sideline. As you know, we talked to Chiswick this week, Gene Chiswick. He said, you know, they're always looking for something to give them momentum. That's what these kids need to try and swing off of. And remember, he said this, guys, when you play on the road in the Big 12, it's hard to win. But when you get something that happens, like the interception, mm -hmm. you've got to use that momentum and try and score here. And that's the key is trying to score here, Lewis. They have to do something. It's one thing taking the football away, but you have to finish it and get it into the end zone. On third down and seven, five-man rush. Arnott throws, pass, complete first down Iowa State. Darius Darks on the reception, the freshman out of Conley High School in Austin, Texas. He picks up 11. And I think Darius Darks has that ability to become the go-to guy for Austin Arnott in this Iowa State offense. You can see him right here. He's a good route runner, and he also uses that big body to protect the football and shield it away from the defensive player right there. And that's a good receiver does. Clean routes and catch the football at the end. Four receptions for Darks. Arnod's going to put it up again. The flat, some raw tip. Almost intercepted. Off the hands of Cedric Johnson. And it should have been picked off. Looked like Ryan Walders had it. McKay touched it. Walders had it right in his sights. And here's the other Iowa State receiver, number two, Cedric Johnson. The big bodied guy, probably the fastest receiver on this football team. He has a good future ahead of him as well, but he's further behind Darks in route running. And as you can see right there, just get your hands up and snatch the football. The most basic component of being a good receiver. And, and Gene Chiswick says, I told my players, you got to make that catch. You're in the Big 12. You're not in high school anymore. Make that catch. Are not a straight keeper. Ducks his head as he gets to the 40. That'll be good for a first down. B.J. Beatty, his first stop on the play. That was a design play, obviously. Yeah, and I think that's what Iowa State has to do is show the willingness for Arnott to keep the football in that zone read scheme from the gun. And you also saw number 75, Doug Dietrich, getting outside and being that guy that really sealed the deal for Arnott to jump up inside. Colorado, two missed field goals. Iowa State has one make. They've had opportunities. They've not taken advantage of it. But as we go inside of five minutes left in the half, the Cyclones have to take advantage of this. Ardard, look out. Gets away. We don't know how. Throws it into the flat. Dropped. Just what we've talked about. Gene Chizik telling his wide receivers, you can't drop those passes. And you see the spectacular play by the young quarterback, Arnod, and you see the drop ball by the veteran receiver, number five, Summerall, on the sideline. 
And that's what you see with offenses that are having trouble moving the football and and scoring points consistently. You see the spectacular, but then you yeah. also see the boneheaded things in the basic elements of this game. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we'll never see George Hippolyte miss a tackle like that again. He went right over the top of Arnold. Second down and 10, 437 left in the half. They're trying to set up the screen. Scales, running room. Inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. Pick up of 17 on the play. In their first meeting of the regular season, last year's Stanley Cup finalists meet again from Hockey Town. The defending champion Red Wings meet Sid the Kid, Sidney Crosby, and the Penguins. The National Hockey League Game of the Week this Tuesday night at 7 Eastern, only on versus. Can't tell I'm a Penguin fan of Pittsburgh. Going to the Penguin game? Maybe I used to go to the Igloo when I was a kid. Right. Still at. John Pronovo, how about that? <laughs> that goes way back. Baz Bastine. You date yourself big time. I know. Scales pulls his way down to the 22 yard line. Ryan Walters, five tackles on the afternoon. All right, Kelly, we've got 352 remaining. Iowa State, not in any hurry, obviously. They lead the ball game 3 0, but this is an important right. drive for Iowa State. You got to get something. The yeah, offensive coordinator, Robert McFarland, talked about you have to finish drives. It isn't good enough just to move the ball between the 20s. You have to finish drives because one thing they want to continue to do is stay ahead so they can continue to run the football. You can't do that when you get behind. Arnaud keeps it. Looking for a block from his wide receiver. Gets a little bit of it. This is reminding me a little bit of the Kansas game we did when Iowa State went up and went out in front 20 nothing. Had chances to maybe add a little more to it. Kansas came back and won it. Yeah, rest assured that before the day's out, most likely Colorado is going to get something going offensively. So Iowa State needs to get enough hay in the barn to try to cover up in the second half, meaning get this ball in the end zone on this drive. Third down and three. One of six for Iowa State on third down this afternoon. Arnott keeps it right up the middle. Gets down to the 11-yard line. That'll be another first down for Iowa State. I like the play calling right now by offensive coordinator Robert McFarland from Iowa State. The pressure is coming up inside. You anticipate it, and what do you do? Quarterback draw up inside as the pressure goes outside, and that screen play to scales the time before. You anticipate pressure and call a play that corresponds to that pressure, and a screen is a perfect call in that situation. First down and 10 from the 11, so they can get a first down. Inside of two and a half to play in the second. Scales, left side, inside the five, and was just a Nats eyelash away from a touchdown. Ron, how about Scales coming in and as a changeup type of back, a little more physical than Robinson, better at the pl blitz pickup, but how about the running game up inside? He's definitely a downhill type of guy, that old style neck yep. roll. He knows how to be a thumper. Well, they call him the most physical of the backs. Picked up seven. And second down. Scales again, breaking tackles, reaches for the goal line, and he is going to be short. But he should have a first down. Ron, how about the job that Iowa State is doing up front? They're getting a Absolutely. great fit. We talked about the changes they made. Alvarez and Brandon Johnson, the right guard on that play, did a very nice job. And, and Colorado's strength, I think, is their defensive tackles with Nicholas and Hippolyte. But they've also had some issues. Remember, they had a great game against West, West Virginia early in the year in that overtime win, but then they got gashed the next week against Florida State in the running game. Five first downs on this drive alone. They've got first and goal. Scales tries to finish off the deed, and he'll be short. Last four games, Iowa State just 9 of 16 in the red zone. Only six of those have been touchdowns. Ron, remember we talked about what Scales brings to the table as a physical runner. Don't give a physical runner the ball late, seven yards in the backfield. That's not Scales' game. Give it to him quick, up the middle, and let him pound it. 60 seconds left to play in the half, and the clock is stopped. We've got a timeout. 
Iowa State will take a timeout, and so will we. They're knocking on the door, leading the Buffaloes by a field goal. The Craftsman Halftime Report on versus straight ahead. Texas is rebounding. We've shown you that. Yes, Big 12 quarterbacks and a wide receiver in our Nissan Heisman watch. And we'll check in on Utah and Boise State as BCS Busters. All coming up, the Craftsman Halftime Report on versus. Ron? All right, thank you, Ted. Six minutes and eight seconds ago, Leonard Johnson picked off a Colorado pass, and Iowa State has gone for 13 plays in 6.08, and now they're at the one yard line. Second down in goal. This is the 14th play of the drive. Scales in the eye formation. And he has the football. And he has a touchdown. The key in that play may have come from 84. Derek Catlett, the fullback, had a great block, and Iowa State goes up 9 0. And once again, Iowa State is doing a great job on the line of scrimmage. There was very little penetration by Colorado, and that's the key to goal line situations, short yardage situations, eliminate penetration by the defensive line. Rand Mahoney has not missed a point after this year. 25 of 25. High snap. Good hold, though, getting the ball down, and it is good. Nice job by Derek Smithgall to get that ball down. Here's the touchdown. And once again, Iowa State on the on the line of scrimmage, and then 91 Pat Neal is also the, the fullback, the lead blocker going outside, and you give it to him going downhill. Scales' game, the skill set is north and south, and right there, the big, really a fullback type body getting the ball six yards deep gets it into the end zone. Scales, 14 yards rushing on six carries, but he does get the touchdown. That is his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Robinson started out the game running the football well. He's got 44 running. More importantly, Iowa State's got a 10-0 lead yeah. within inside of a minute. And I like the way Iowa State has functioned offensively here. Robert McFarlane, at first, you established the run game that was a lot of the zone read scheme from the gun, and Alexander Robinson was the ball carrier, and then you put Jason skills scales in more of a change of pace type of guy much more physical a different skill set and it worked very well Ben Hawkins will turn 48 years old on Monday but if his team doesn't score he'll reach 50 probably yeah. by Monday <laughs> exactly he'll age him. he's turning much older as we speak Josh Smith standing back on his own goal line Colorado will have 55 seconds it's a short squid kick Iowa State doing a nice job covering it up to the 32-yard line. Awesome game coming up next week, USC and Stanford. And I can tell you, my friends, neither team has forgotten what happened last year. You just have 95,000 screaming fans. It's loud. What it takes to beat a USC, you know, in the Coliseum. I mean, it takes a lot of strength. It takes mighty men standing shoulder to shoulder, playing as a team. Coming out of the Stanford game last year, we're not going to let that get in the way of what we're going to do with the season. It was actually great silencing last year. And that'll be coming your way live on Versus next Saturday. We'll all be there. Hanson pressured again. We've seen it all afternoon. And he, again, he has to throw it away. That's probably the fourth time he's thrown a ball away. Michael Tate out of Washington, Tulsa Washington High School, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's the one who put the pressure on. And remember, we talked about the quarterback rotation, and we knew we were going to see more of Tyler Hansen today, less of Cody Hawkins. But rest assured, Ron, if Colorado was better at the line of scrimmage yeah. and pass protection, Cody Hawkins would be playing quarterback, and Tyler Hansen would still be a redshirt quarterback That's exactly here. Exactly right. And we're seeing the fact he's got to use his legs. Now Demetrius Sumler in the backfield. He's mainly used for blocking. He slips out of the backfield. Hansen. In trouble. Has time. No receivers moving towards him. And he has to throw it on a short pass, but he'll pick up four on the play. Stay tuned for the Nissan Heisman watch coming up at halftime right here on Versus.
Hey, Ro, I'll be listening back there in the studio now. I'm, you know, I'm going to give mine. I'm telling you, you, know, you guys are forgetting week, one guy. You know, last week, though, you guys made me give my picks before Ro did his in the studio. And quite frankly, I think he stole most of my stuff. I, I, well, I think he changed his stuff at halftime. So this time I get to go second. How come nobody has Des Bryant on that list? You haven't seen my list Okay, list yet. okay. On third down and short. Hanson again scrambling for his life should get the first down and he barely does flips up over the 40 yard line to the 41 and that should be a first down with 25 ticks left on the clock and still plenty of time and a couple timeouts left Tyler Hanson once again you everything's new as a young quarterback this hurry up situation mm -hmm. clock management is very important for his experience Iowa State shuffling players in Hanson off balance completes the pass pickup of five to Demetrius Sumler and they're going to call a timeout. Jesse Sumler on the or just sniff on it. No a fumble. Wow. Now they're saying that no, I, was, I don't think so. Well, I, I think, think they so called either. it down and called a timeout. I yeah, believe I think that's what they did. Wow. They, they had two hands up. Yeah, exactly. Is, yeah. They, they weren't signaling change of possession. They were signaling time out but let's take a look right here at the end once again a catch in college football is considered a process ground it's not it cannot cause a, or there's no ground can cause a fumble rule in college football by the way and did he complete that process that's the question the last but the replay booth is not asked to look at this yet well, Sumler certainly felt that he dropped that football the way he was scrambling around. Yeah. Hawkins talking to Hanson. But that's the other part of this Colorado offense. Hawkins would be playing if they were better at the line yes. of scrimmage. They get more out of Tyler Hanson's mobility, but you get very little separation from this receiving core from Colorado at this point in time, which is the other side of the equation. And now Iowa State wants to call a timeout. Wayne Bolt, the defensive coordinator, who's been who just flat out told us, goes, listen, we're not playing well. Period. We're, we're trying to fill holes here, but our kids are playing hard. Gene Chizik telling us earlier this week and for the past couple of weeks, his kids have never given up. And you've got to credit right. the Wayne Bolts, the McFarlands, the right. Chizik's, the coaching staff of Iowa State keeping these kids in this game right. and in the season considering what's happened. Yeah, that's a great point. And learning how to get better in your practice time, you only get 20 hours out there with with these young men so learning how to time management get better in practice and remember Ron you're not just playing for today when you're building right. a program you're playing for games and years to come so you have to stay the course and sometimes it's not easy now the replay booth by the way did look at that pass and what could have been a fumble and they said no it was a catch and no fumble Hanson gets away still on his feet still in trouble squished as he throws the football and it's going to be incomplete with four seconds left in the half and he is down at the 45 yard line slow to get up and once again you see Colorado benefiting from Tyler Hansen's mobility keeping the play alive extending the play but yet he doesn't have the experience to finish the play like a Cody Hawkins you, mm -hmm. you really need the best of both of those young men right now yeah, really. would be the best situation for Colorado offensively. I'll tell you Hanson does not look in good shape right now. He is walking very gingerly. This will be the last play of the half. Iowa State with eight players about 35 yards away and they still get some pressure. Here comes the prayer. And there's the answer. James Smith knocks it down so it's a first half which Colorado missing field goal attempts from 38 and 29 yards Iowa State getting a field goal and a touchdown that's why they lead 10 to nothing and Gene Chizik is with our Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks, Ron. Coach, what did that interception do for you? You talk so much about the need for momentum for your team. Well, obviously, turnovers are a huge deal deal for us. We've been pretty good at that all year. That just changed the momentum of the game. Our offense, we're struggling. It gave us a little bit of swing, a little bit of swagger back, and it helped us get a 10-point lead. And so now you're pitching the shutout so far here with Colorado, but you know they'll regroup. How do you keep your defense on top of them? Well, we've got to play a lot harder in the second half. We've been in this position before this year right. and come back and blown it in the second half. So we got to regroup and refocus, and uh, we got to get some more turnovers in the second half and continue to move the ball on offense and get first downs. All right, Gene, thanks. Thank you. Ron? All right, Lewis, the halftime score again. Iowa State leading at 10-0. After the break, stay tuned.
tuned for the Craftsman, Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus. Welcome to the Craftsman Halftime Report from College Football Central on versus Ted Robinson, Roland Williams, Iowa State trying to break a road losing streak 15 straight. They've lost on the road. We're watching the first half of this game and following the Utah TCU game. I thought kids in this country played soccer more and more. <laughs> Where are the kickers? Where's the kickers and overall, where's the defense in college football? We'll talk about that later. All right, well, we have a Big 12 matchup that started early today with Texas trying to rebound from its heartbreaking loss in Lubbock last Saturday. The Horns back in Austin against Baylor on this afternoon, and it wound up with Texas ahead 14-0. Robert Griffin, the Baylor freshman quarterback, scores a run, uh, scores on a one-yard run, then hits Kendall right for the tying touchdown. You know, Texas, one thing they have to get better at is their pass defense. They're ranked 117th in the country. they got to get better on that side of the football, and then you see them make a play. If you keep getting picked on, at some point you're going to make a play. Well, that helped. The tip pass, pick six for Ryan Palmer to give Texas the lead, and then Colt McCoy took over. Another huge day here 40 yards with Brandon Collins and in the second half Texas has blown this wide open McCoy five touchdown passes 42 14 and what's shocking to me is that Texas in the human polls this week was ranked behind Oklahoma. How could that possibly be? Well, because they lost a football game they shouldn't have lost. One thing I looked at in this game, though, in the first half, they had a chance to put some points on the board. Last week, only six points in the first half. They came back and got better. This is what you want to see out of Texas. They're a team that can bounce back and make plays. How would you like to be Oklahoma State? Their last three road trips at number three, Missouri, at number one, Texas, and tonight at number two, Texas Tech. Mike Leach on his side calls it the biggest game in the history of this year. Does Texas Tech have what's, what it takes to do it two weeks in a row? You know, both these teams are so exciting, so dynamic. Last year when these two teams played, they had about 1,000 yards in total offense. Unbelievable. Michael Crabtree, I think the nation's best receiver, had three touchdowns in the first half. Graham Harrell, the quarterback, 646 yards passing. This game is going to be about what team can actually play a little bit of defense and slow the other guy down. Texas Tech, I think they're the favorite to win this football game. Was I nuts? Did that Crabtree play sh harken back to a little younger? T.O., the way those DBs just fell off He has off the him. build. He has the build. Maybe not the same attitude. All right, well, is Michael Crabtree going to get in the conversation with these quarterbacks that we've talked all year about? It's our Nissan Heisman watching. It focuses on the Big 12 when the Craftsman Halftime Report continues on Versus. The Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus is brought to you by Craftsman. There's a Craftsman in all of us. The Craftsman Halftime Report on versus this week's NCAA team rankings row five of the top 10 passing offenses in America come from the Big 12. Yeah, no shock quarterbacks. And now we have a receiver that has fully put himself in the conversation for the Heisman, hasn't he? Well, they deserve it. They've played their way to the top, and they're doing an unbelievable job. The quarterbacks in the Big 12, all I can say, mwah, machissimo. They're awesome. These guys make plays. Graham Harrell, he's the guy. He's almost third all-time history passing ever in college football. He's not getting enough credit for that. Colt McCoy, I think he's done a great job considering he doesn't have the established running back. The receivers made his offense really go. And Bradford, the silent assassin, has been making plays all season long. When you lose a football game, sometimes you lose the media attention. You're not going to get all the credit, but he's still making a lot of plays. All right, so this year I've tried to insert Donald Brown of UConn or Javon Ringer of Michigan no. State at the times. But Crabtree, I heard it said Crabtree dominated the game last Saturday. He has to be in this conversation there. He's in the conversation, but he's getting the ball from Graham. Graham's the distributor. He's getting on the football. And there's another receiver for Oklahoma State, Dez Bryant. This guy is amazing. He also should be in consideration. Tonight's a big night to see who's who in the Heisman Zoo. And the story all year has been, we just mentioned three Big 12 quarterbacks, and we still could put in uh, Chase Daniel of Missouri. You still could put in Zach Robinson, who's probably the most unheralded one of the Big 12. We could right? put him in there. But right now, I think this is Graham Harrell's lose. He's just been amazing. Please watch this guy. He is a phenomenal football player. And if that young Texas defensive back held the ball <laughs> last Saturday night, Texas wins the game, and it's probably McCoy we're still talking about as the front runner, right? Well, we still have BCS busting in this month of November. There are two teams, and actually maybe a third team, trying to be BCS busters. Updates when the Craftsman Halftime Report continues on Versus. 
The Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus. Thursday night, Salt Lake City, Brian Johnson connects with Freddie Brown to complete an 80-yard drive after trailing for 59 minutes. Utah drove the field at the end and survived TCU's last-minute try. Utah stays unbeaten 13 to 10 over TCU. Bro, if I had to nominate a team for burglar of the year, it's Utah. They've done this a couple times. They literally steal a game. They have no business winning. They keep stealing games, but the bottom line is they're winning. The head coach, Kyle Whittingham, I know he's a smart guy, and I know when he's watching these games, he's realizing there's two big holes they have. One, the defense too generous, and two, the quarterback is very inconsistent. But the bottom line is they're in position to go BCS party. Now, remember, these are the overall BCS standings. Interestingly, in the computer ranks, Utah is seven. And as we switch, Boise State by the computer rank is actually ranked eighth or 10th overall. And the other team did not forget about this. Ball State still undefeated. And the computer ranks, they're actually 15th. And they've got two games against decent teams, Central Michigan, Western Michigan coming up. So the odds are, are unlikely it'll be three teams, but you could have three in theory, ending up in the top 14. This whole situation is Utah's to finish out. BCS Bowl, and they got one game, San Diego State. Then they have the big one, November 22nd against BYU. If they can win both of those football games, they're off BCS. And even though they stole some games, they're getting in. Absolutely. And give Brian Johnson credit. He, he doesn't look great for much of a game. But boy, does this guy know how to do it in the final minutes? He does. He finds a way to win. All right, we're going to head back to Boulder for the second half. Can Iowa State break this long road losing streak? 10-0 the halftime lead on Versus. This has been the Craftsman Halftime Report on Versus. Brought to you by Craftsman. There's a Craftsman in all of us. Third quarter straight ahead. Colorado trailing Iowa State with their bowl hopes in the balance, 10 to nothing. Now, earlier, we saw Colin Franklin of Iowa State catch a pass and also tickle the Ivories. We asked him to play what a good Iowa State scoring drive would sound like. Not exactly something from Queen, a rousing rendition that song. I think, I think it, it was. Put... I think it was right on. A no. scoring drive is a beautiful thing to witness. That piece fit perfectly. <laughs> that music could put you to sleep, and some of the offense could put you to sleep in that first half. Unfortunately, especially if you're Colorado, only 110 yards, and they they missed two golden opportunities to score, missing two field goals. They've struggled, but Iowa State, on the other hand, their offensive line's done great. Well, we saw in that scoring drive that was the difference. Iowa State has been able to take advantage of their opportunities, get the ball in the end zone and Colorado really didn't have an answer Thailand Tyler Hansen's mobility did not translate into touchdowns mm -hmm. and that's the problem for this offense right now the good news is there's plenty of time left and we have already seen once this year on versus Iowa State imploding in the second half and that came against Kansas after leading 20 to nothing at halftime and Iowa State will get the football to begin the second half and they'll get it on their own 20 yard line you know, Kelly, we talk about missed opportunities. How important is this for Iowa State to not relive what happened against the University of Kansas a few weeks ago? Yeah, I think that is exactly what they're thinking is they they don't want to have flashbacks to that losing that lead in that Kansas game. And also traditionally, as we talked about, the first drive of the second half for an offense is the most important drive because mm -hmm. you reestablish the tone. You hold on to that momentum that Gene Chisick talked to Lewis Johnson about at the end of the first half. You reestablish that here in the second half. Once again, Iowa State trying to snap a 15-game road losing streak. This time, the Colorado defense up to the challenge. Nothing there for Alexander Robinson, who had a decent first half as he was able to rush for 44 yards on 11 carries. And, and rest assured that the Colorado Buffalo football team got an earful at halftime. Now, the team that would respond most likely to that right away is their defense. It's a veteran bunch. 
a lot of leaders on that defense. Look for the defense from Colorado to try to establish something for their football team. Three wide receivers to the right, and Arnaud will keep it on the ground. Robinson, again, very little. Maybe got two. Lewis Johnson, you spent some time with uh, Coach Dan Hawkins of Colorado. What was he like after intermission? Well, you know, I think he had just finished giving that big speech that Kelly talked about, and I asked him really to evaluate Tyler Hansen and if he was okay because he took a heck of a shot there, a second to last play. You know, he didn't really give me much more on Hanson's conditions, but he said, listen, team-wise, this is we're tough, but the kids are so young, they haven't had an opportunity. They've had the emotion sucked out of them. They're emotionless, and that's what they're trying to find here in the second half. And in terms of field goals, he just kind of chuckled and said, I don't know what we're going to do about that. Yeah, that's a big problem for him. On third down, Arnott, is he going down? Gets the pass away, but it's going to be incomplete. Did a nice job. If not, he would have been sacked at the 10-yard line. Lewis? One other thing to add here, Ron, there is a chance, according to Dan Hawkins, that we may see his son, Cody Hawkins, at quarterback as the game goes on, so we'll have to watch for that. And, Lewis, keep an eye on the Colorado bench for us because we talked to the Colorado coaches during the week, and they talked about the mentality of this group. They continue to practice well, get better. They don't get down. Keep your eye out for signs of getting down on that sideline. Bradner's kick is a low spiral, and it'll go out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. He punted twice in that opening half. Of course, they drew two penalties while kicking. Well, the only way to beat him is to ride him. The Rikers Bulls on the planets are unleashed, and for the Cowboys who try to hang on, their fate is decided every eight seconds. A million-dollar purse awaits the rider who can tame the beast at the PBR World Finals. Live from Las Vegas, a champion will be crowned. Coverage continues tonight. 9 o'clock Eastern right here on Versus. And Cody Hawkins is in at quarterback. The sophomore from Boise, Idaho. Of course, the coach's son. Started every game last year and this year. Except for Missouri. And here is Scott. Coaches told us and Lewis reported at the beginning of the game how the coaches said it is his time. But he didn't do a whole lot in that opening half. But a lot of it has to go no blocking. Yeah, no blocking. Receivers that don't create separation is not a good thing for a young quarterback, regardless of how mobile you are. But what Cody Hawkins brings to the table is leadership. There's a buzz right now on offense. You could see it on the sideline. We'll see if they can extend it into the end zone. Second and short. Scott, big hole, right side, turns on the Jets. Inside the 30-yard line before he is run out of bounds down at the 18-yard line by James Smith. And you already see what Cody Hawkins brings to the table there. Right now, Tyler Hansen doesn't just because of a matter of youth and motion. Guys up front are blocking better. Daryl Scott is running harder, and you can we'll just need to see if they extend this into points and create a different atmosphere offensively for this Buffalo team. 37 yards on the scamper. He had a 42-yarder last week against AM. Scott, they'll try him one more time, goes to the short side. He is shoved out of bounds. And they'll mark it at about the 13-yard line. This is so important. You know, basketball games, we always talk about the first five minutes of the yeah. second half. Football, you can do it. Your first possession of the second half, you talked about it for Iowa State. Same holds true for Colorado. Right. What Colorado's defense started, Colorado's offense needs to finish right here. And it's a matter right now of challenging the guys up front to do something. The easiest thing in the game is to play with emotion in the running game. And right now, Colorado's doing just that. They're going to go with a running egg again. This time, Scott has stood up at the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot there. And we've got a player down. Getting up very slowly on this play. It looks like Keenan Stevens. Not sure. Nope. Blake Barron's the left guard. Remember, Colorado up front, Ron, really has about six offensive linemen that are ready to play in some form. Mm -hmm. And Barron's gets rolled on right at the end. His right knee as the ball carrier goes down into him. They don't have a lot of guys up front to begin with. And what they do have are extremely inexperienced. Well, he, Barron's is a redshirt freshman. Ethan Atkins is really only the backup they have. He's also a redshirt freshman from Douglas County High School in Castle Rock, Colorado, right here in, in the Denver area. This will be a third down in four. 
Ironically enough, side. Ron, Colorado is better on third and long than they are in third and four situations just like this. Barely get it off. Here comes the blitz. Hawkins' throw is complete. Down to about the seven-yard line. And that should be a first down. Kennard Banks was on the coverage. Hawkins barely got rid of that to Cody Crawford. Yeah, Iowa State was coming after Cody Hawkins, and Cody did the right thing. Stand in the pocket, knowing you're going to take a shot and deliver the football right there. That's toughness. That's a coach's son, and that's what Cody Hawkins brings to the table. And a fresh set of downs, first and goal from the seven-yard line. The workhorse has been Daryl Scott, the freshman out of Ventura, California, here in the second half. And here he is again. Takes a hard hit as he gets to the five-yard line. Falls forward to the four. But Ron, if you're Colorado right now, you continue to challenge the guys on the line of scrimmage. Up front, they need to get it done. Get lathered up, get a hat on a hat, play with some passion, and give your young ball handlers some room to run with it. Five carries, 53 yards on this drive for Scott. Hawkins makes very few mistakes in the red zone this year. Has some time, moving the pocket, has a man almost intercepted, and that was almost one of the few mistakes he makes. Well, Jesse Smith, the middle linebacker, number 54, did a nice job of recognizing that route. You diagnose it, and then you play it. He's the middle linebacker right there. Eyes on the quarterback, roll with the play, hunt up a receiver, and then try to get your hands on the football. But you're right, Ron, 27 trips into the red zone, or at least pass attempts. Cody Hawkins has 24 touchdowns mm -hmm. to three picks. Impeccable decision-making down there. And that is Jesse Smith, the middle linebacker. Hawkins will go to the side. Smith is up with a little hitch. We'll check on his condition, see if Colorado can push it in. Stone's throw from the stadium, an absolutely beautiful sight as you walk to Folsom Field. And just a few moments ago, Hawkins and Hanson meeting on the sideline in the first half. We saw Cody Hawkins encouraging Hanson. Now he returns the favor. Get at him, big guy. Third down and goal from the four-yard line for Colorado. 0 for 1 in that first half in the red zone. Scott in the eye formation. Barron's in front of him. And it is Scott, and he is going to be stopped again. Josh Raven is the one who really detonated that play. He got the penetration, allowed Chris Singleton to make the tackle. If you're Colorado, you got no choice. You got to go for it. Yeah, you left six points off the board in the first half and missed mixed field goals. Why not give some other element of your offense another opportunity right here? Probably get Cody Hawkins outside the pocket, probably to the to the right side down here. Well, Wayne Bolt and the defensive coaches were running timeout. out on the field, and they wanted a timeout. Timeout, Iowa State. Fourth down and goal for Colorado. We'll take a break. Can Coach Hawkins punch it in for his team? Fourth down and goal for Colorado, and they're going up for it because of this. They missed two field goals in that first half. One of 38, another of 29 yard line by Jamison Davis. So they've got to go for it. It's third down and about four and a half. Or fourth down and four and a half. And Ron, this is the situation where Tyler Hansen's mobility would be welcome down here as the field is condensed, but you don't want to put him on the field in sake of and Cody Hawkins' decision making down here I think wins out. Sumler's now in the backfield as Hawkins by some time goes for the touchdown and he's got it Scotty McKnight His eighth touchdown pass of the year for Cody Hawkins Scotty McKnight's third touchdown reception And he was wide open Now comes the extra point, and this is important. And it is blocked. They just can't buy a break. Eric Goodman was kicking the extra point, and it didn't get that high up in the air. 
Let's go back to the touchdown. That's the good news if you're Colorado is Cody Hawkins hooking up with McKnight. Yeah, and Cody makes great decisions down here in the red zone. You can see the crossing route inside. Really, it's more of a rub route as the defender is rubbed off of McKnight. But Cody Hawkins does a great job of finding the open guy, making great decisions. And the leadership that Cody Hawkins shows to his football team and the emotion that his team played with offensively on that drive is what Cody Hawkins brings to the table. Nine plays, 63 yards, three minutes and 47 seconds. It took him most of those yards coming on the back of Daryl Scott, the eye back. He had 53 yards on five carries during that time, but Hawkins is the one who led him. But how important will that missed extra point be? Nate Freer, by the way, got a hand on it for Iowa State. Remember right now, Iowa State has to be potentially thinking, as you do, especially with young players, thinking back to, now, wait a minute. We did the same thing against Kansas a few weeks ago. Is this deja vu all over again, as Yogi would yeah. say? And those things stick in your mind, especially as a young player. Jamison Davis will kick it off. Leonard Johnson one yard deep. He set the FBS record last week in kickoff returns. Doesn't get much this time. Of course, Cody Hawkins, his dad is Dan Hawkins, and we talked to Dan Hawkins about the relationship he has with his son. The advantage of having your son play quarterback, uh, I think would be one you totally understanding um, and I think that's a you have to have a close relationship you know with, with your quarterback I think probably the disadvantages for me probably are more experienced by him than they are myself uh, and that you never totally one of the guys exactly they you know it's it's hard to get out of the you're the coach's kid mold all right, and Iowa State has it. Arnott over the middle has got the first down up to the 38-yard line is Darius Darks. That is Darks' fifth reception of the ball game. And this is how Iowa State started the game. The play-action pass, and you throw to the inside receiver. In this case, it's Darius Darks. Remember how Iowa State started the contest through that same route, but that time it was due to, call, to Colin Franklin, the tight end down the middle of that 2 deep zone coverage that Colorado likes to play. Dark seven receptions for 113 yards versus Oklahoma State last week. His first 100-yard game. He's got five for 50 today. Robinson, running room, close to midfield and close to another first down. Ryan Walters in double digits with tackles. He's got 10. And what Iowa State wants to do here, Ron, is just go back to what they did in the first half. Get a good fit up front in that zone running scheme. Try to gash them a little bit, pound them, and then play action pass and try to get just enough out of your game. Robert McFarlane, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State, says it for us it's about balance with the running game and then the play action passing game. Now they go in a little tighter formation on second down and short, and Arnod reaches over his 6'3 frame, and it's going to be close. Now the Colorado sideline, Lewis Johnson, had to be pretty excited about that touchdown. But then it kind of gets deflated with the block extra point. Oh, my goodness, Ron. I was over here on the uh, Colorado sideline, and, and they just went berserk when Cody Hawkins threw that touchdown. But then the momentum swept, switched right to the other side of the field with Iowa State blocking the kick. And now they try and use it, Iowa State does, to march down the field. Remember, we said earlier, it's the, one of the storylines of the game. Iowa State needs to have momentum, and they get it off of the emotional moments like that block kick. Let's see what they do. And, Lewis, that's a great, that's a great point in what Gene Chizik referred to him as momentum swings. Mm -hmm. And he obviously wants those momentum swings to be in his favor. And it's little things like that. Colorado gets down, scores a touchdown, but Iowa State gets the momentum back in a slide way by blocking that extra point. You know, and this is a team that looking for something good because the early losses has really took the confidence of this team away. Their first three losses by a combined 17 points, the next four by an average of 28. And Iowa State has double tight end, single back. This means we're going to pound on you, Colorado, just a little bit. Robinson looks for some type of blocking hole, maybe gets a yard and a half. Ryan Walters, his 11th tackle from that free safety spot, the senior out of Aurora, Colorado. They call Walters the smart guy. He's intelligent. Career highs in everything this year. 
His dad, of course, was a, believe it or not, a quarterback here at Colorado. Only to have Tyler Hansen break his father's rushing records for freshman <laughs> quarterback. Sorry, Mark, had to mention it. Very important down right here. Iowa State did not win on first down. They do not want to get into third and long. Arnott looks to run the option. They string it out. Nice job, Colorado, but Arnott still able to get about five on the play. He gets up over the 45-yard line before Jalil Brown brings him down. And they're taking such a chance because, once again, the backup quarterback for Iowa State left the team about three weeks ago. Arnott is really the only guy they have because Jerome Tiller, the true freshman, they want to redshirt him. They don't want him in the ballgame. Yeah, Arnott has been banged up. He's, he's played through some pain, which you have to do at this level. You're essentially never healthy after about the first game of yeah. the year. And so he has to play through it. And in these situations, Colorado defensively has shown a willingness to come after Arnott. Third down and three. Here comes the blitz. Arnott reads it. The pass off the fingertips, incomplete, intended for Darius Darks. Brad Jones on the coverage. That is probably at least the third pass, Kelly. They should have caught. You're right. This is catchable. Difficult, but catchable. And Darks just running the outside, breaking route right there. It's in his hand. You just have yeah. to catch the football. And Arnott knows that as a quarterback, you can throw to the right guy and you can throw the right ball to the right guy, but you can't finish the play. His young receiver has to finish the play. And Mike Brantner back on his own 40-yard line, set to kick it away. Josh Smith on his own five-yard line. Snap a little off to the right, but Brantner gets it end over end. Smith at the seven. And he is knocked out at about the 16-yard line. 37 on the kick, 9 on the return. Iowa State still leads Colorado. 75th season is the Buffaloes for Colorado. They trail Iowa State by four. This is probably also the greenest stadium in the country. Zero waste. You can see the recycling. And you can also ride your bike. Now, if you ride your bike, they provide valet service You've got to for, for your you bike. Hey, and everybody hey, uses it, including sideline reporters, who looks like he could be going to class. He's got the backpack okay, thank working. You. No kidding. And I think he actually rode his bike from Dallas. I, I may be wrong there, but. You know, you, you know, I didn't ride it from Dallas, but the short distance that I did, it felt like I rode it from Dallas. <laughs> yeah. 5,800 feet, are you kidding me? That that's a really neat thing that they have going here where they valet park your bikes and this is considered a green campus and you'll see the recycling bins all over the stadium and they are serious about it. Uh, but the Lewis tip the valet. You know what bike. we may need to look into? Upgrading Lewis's insurance policy. <laughs> you know, he's running around tracks. He's trying to ride buffaloes. He's riding bicycles. Next week, he's going to want to parachute into the stadium or something. Hey, don't get me started, Kelly. I'll be asking for yeah, a helicopter next, go. right? There you go. No, but it's neat to come here. You go back to 1976. That's when Colorado established uh, this green uh, campus mentality, and they've got one of the strongest recycling programs in the nation and received several awards on it. So as we had fun with it, they are very serious about it. And they've done a great job. Absolutely. Of it. On second down and eight, Hawkins passes complete to Williams, breaks away, and instead of tackling him, they shove him, and he goes ahead another five yards. May have been Ernest Ferguson, the true freshman, you got to wrap those guys up. And one of the things to yards after the catch is the ball that comes out on time. Cody makes a great decision, throws the ball hard and accurate, and that gives your receiver an opportunity, in this case, Patrick Williams, to wheel around and get yards after the catch, which is very important for this mm -hmm. struggling offense right now for Colorado. Now, Iowa State had tackling problems last week in a game with Oklahoma State, and they weren't able to wrap up there. First down and 10, 100 career catches now for Williams. Hawkins will chuck it again. Deep into the flat, incomplete for Josh Smith. We talk about chucking the football. We talked to the defensive coordinator of Iowa State, Wayne Bold, and he said, we got to be aware when Cody Hawkins is in there because he can chuck it down the field. Yeah. He was very concerned if Hawkins was going to play in this game. And he's, Cody is certainly the quarterback as opposed to Tyler Hansen that's much more developed in the passing game. He's a coach's son for crying out loud. He understands how to play the game and he makes very good decisions in the passing game and yes, the downfield passing game in particular. Smith and Williams wide to the left. Iowa State shows six on the line. 
Hawkins just runs it out into the flat. Smith loses his balance, but still able to get close to the first down. In Cyclone territory, two yards short. Just couldn't get the feet underneath him. A very good job of Colorado that maybe just calling the right play accidentally. The quick screen. And Iowa State wasn't in their typical two deep coverage. They were trying to get more guys on the line of scrimmage, playing a little bit softer outside, which is exactly the time to run that screen to the wide receiver. One tackle for the turf monster. Third down and short. It's about two. First down, Colorado, Scotty McKnight. Inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line. Hundley on the coverage. You think Colorado is throwing that football at third and two if Tyler Hansen is, a game, is yeah, in the game? Right. Absolutely not, but that's what Cody Hawkins brings to the table. He's more advanced in the passing game, part of this Colorado offense, and you can see it right there. Very accurate, move the chains, try to get this ball in the end zone. With night two catches today. Fresh set of downs for Colorado. Inside of four and a half to play here in the third. Hawkins buying time as the pocket moves. Passes complete. Pickup of six. Make that seven down to the 33-yard line. McKnight's second consecutive catch. You know, you look at Scotty McKnight. Here's a guy that's 5'11", 190. He's kind of what coaches like to call a baller and a scrapper. Not exactly a burner, but he understands spacing. Yeah. And we've seen that in the last two catches. And most people call it a possession receiver. He runs clean routes. You talked about he knows he has the feel of playing in space. He knows where the void is. You turn around, show the quarterback your numbers, and he's the type of guy that's a chain mover, and that's what Cody Hawkins can feed off of right now. On second down, Scott gets hit hard as he gets to the 30-yard line. On any given Saturday, anything can happen. And last year, in one of the most stunning upsets in college football history, the Stanford Cardinal took down the best team in the nation, the Trojans of USC. Now, the long-awaited rematch coming next week, USC-Stanford, Saturday, November 15th versus college football. It's wild out here. Stanford, we'll be there. If Stanford's going to have a chance to win that game, they better be prepared to play against the USC defense. They gave up 27 oh. points in one game against Oregon State, 30 in the next seven opponents. Third down and short. Scott into the secondary, still on his feet. Backs his way down to the 22-yard line for Darrell Scott. Well, Daryl Scott, and we talked, Lewis talked at the top about that breakout game. He's really the running back on this team that has everything. He has vision, he has speed, he's physical, he's a big back. But the one thing he hasn't learned yet is how to play through the, the bumps and bruises mm -hmm. and nicks that you get at the college level. You have to tape it up and get out there and practice well to play well. 16 carries, 75 yards now for Scott. First and 10 for Colorado, 228 left in the third. A little play action going deep, wide open. This is another six for Colorado and Scotty McKnight. Hawkins to McKnight, the connection again. Second time here in quarter number three. And Colorado's got their first lead of the ball game. This covered 22 yards. Oh boy, Colorado fans are already buzzing. Are they going to get the extra point? Good snap, good hold. The largest ovation of the afternoon comes for an Eric Goodman PAT. Look, taking a look at how Scotty McKnight got so wide open. The fake screen actually to Josh Smith, who is out here. The fake wide receiver screen, and then Scotty McKnight is going to actually go up the sideline. Great execution not only on the play, but also the play call taking advantage of the inexperienced secondary, in particular the young freshman run or quarterbacks for Iowa State. McKnight, just a sophomore, had two touchdown receptions coming into today. He's got two this afternoon. A little different second half, Ron, than oh, we yeah. saw in the first half, right? Well, you got that right. Hey, let's take a look at what teams are on top in the lows building towards the VCS 
here on versus you can see Alabama of course yeah. LSU their next opponent Texas Tech and Oklahoma State in Lubbock tonight yeah. State, Alabama Iowa Alabama probably has Florida in the SEC championship game Texas Tech Oregon State tonight and they have to go to Norman to play the Sooners in a couple of weeks and then Penn State has the easiest road but I don't think people it really like their strength of schedule if you're Penn State so look for Texas or Florida to have an opportunity to get back in the race. Well speaking of getting back in the race let's see if Iowa State can do it they led at halftime. Try to get things going here in the second half. That was RJ Summerall on the return speaking of that Texas Texas Tech game what an outstanding game last week. As Graham Harrell came down to this time running out he finds Crabtree tiptoes down the sideline touchdown and for the first time in 70 some years Texas Tech upsets the number one team in the country and so here's who they got left you know OK you, you, you beat Texas you have a chance at Oklahoma State and by golly you're, we're going to yeah. be so nice you get to play Oklahoma in a couple weeks. Arnold keeps it turns the corner gets in midfield. Still on his feet inside the 40 down to the 35 yard line. He didn't look like he was running fast at that point. Well, poor job, but by contained by number 90, Mark Marquez Hura at that time. He's a defensive end right there. You have contained on the quarterback. Stay at home. Don't get caught peeking inside. But that's exactly who Arnott runs away from. 26 yards on the pickup. That ties as long as the. Ninth or 2008, and that's a first and ten. And Iowa State moving inside of 150 to play in the third. The quick out to Darts, and he gets inside the 30. And we've got four penalty flags coming in, and it's going to be a face mask call. All four of them are going to be a face masking. Exactly right. Add 15 to this because remember, the five yard incidental yeah. went out the window. So this is going to tack on a whole bunch if you're Iowa State. This is a major confidence booster. Personal foul, face mask. Number 47, 15 yard penalty. Major confidence Kendrick. booster for the Cyclones. Half the distance to the goal. They get First scored down. on, they get the lead taken away, yeah. and now they're on a drive, a nine yard pickup, plus half the distance to the goal line. Yeah, that's that's a great point because winning on the road, especially in conference, in the Big 12 conference, you have to answer your opponent. And that's this right. is Iowa State's answer right here. And they're going to put the ball inside the 15 down at the 14 yard line for the Cyclones. 138 to play in the third. Austin Arnod today, 8 of 18, 92 yards. But he's been the general. Robinson breaks one tackle. Inside the 10, inside the 5, touchdown, Iowa State. How's that for an answer, big guy? That is a nice run by Robinson because he got those cyclone yards. Talk about making people miss. Yeah, yards after contact is a beautiful thing if you're trying yeah. to run the football into the end zone. And here comes the extra point. And this is an important extra point because it'll put the cyclones up by four. The freshman Mahoney drills it. Alexander Robinson, the sophomore out of De La Salle High School in Minneapolis. Well, defending the zone read is just about assignment football. Arnott gets the give from the defense, which is meaning the defensive end has him, so you give it up inside. But then Robinson makes a whole lot happen after he was contacted by the first time. Robinson already with more yards this year than all of last year. The last three games, he's averaged better than 80 yards. Ron, we saw this on film, watching especially Oklahoma State last week, as Robinson was getting a much better feel in that running mm -hmm. game, much more productive. And you're right, the Cyclone yards, getting yards after the catch, which he wasn't getting early in the season. Yards after the carry, I mean, or contact. Well, fourth straight game, Alexander Robinson has scored a touchdown, and now Dan Hawkins' squad, let's see if they can answer, with 123 left in the third. Both teams trying to snap losing streaks, but if you're Dan Hawkins, whether or not you go to a bowl game is in the balance, and a lot depends on what happens this afternoon. And have Cody Hawkins in the game right now, obviously it's been a great idea. Pass the football and test Iowa State's young secondary. 
This will be Josh Smith from inside the five. Corralled at the 25 yard line. For those of you that just joined us before the game, we were in the locker room with Gene Chizik of Iowa State. Here's what he told his team. When we walk off this field, I want you to know, not for you and not for anybody but your teammates, you played with as much energy and as much passion as you have in the depth of your bones to make sure that you take ownership in this win. You hear me? Yes, sir. You will take ownership in this win. And if you play with passion and emotion, men, and it ain't about you today, it's about your teammate, you will win this football game, and we will get on that plane, and you will have a victory today, man. Hawkins throws this one up. That's incomplete, and that should be a penalty. I don't see any flags, though. Do you, Kelly? No, no flags, and I think Iowa State has certainly the right to complain, as you see yeah. Gene Chizik doing right there. Cody Hawkins was in the pocket, threw the ball out of bounds. It went past the line of scrimmage, but it makes no difference if you're in the pocket and you don't have a receiver in the neighborhood. See where the closest Buffalo receiver is right there. Not even in the picture. No. That's intentional grounding. Well, I didn't see anybody. He didn't get outside the tackles. That was obvious. Second down and 10. Scott already a career high running the football, but he's going to lose a half a yard on that one. Fred Guerin coming up with the stop. So Gene Chizik in his second year, this is a guy that's, that will turn this program around. I don't think there's any doubt in a lot of people's mind. I know some people may be frustrated back in Ames, but let me tell you something. He's got a plan, and he's going to stick to it, just like Dan Hawkins is at Colorado. You're right, and I think in times where your program is struggling, as you're trying to lay that foundation, the fans want you to scrap everything and go to something new yeah. because what you're currently doing isn't working. That isn't the way to build a program. Stick to what you believe in and get it done. Third down and 10. 30 seconds left in the third. Here comes the blitz. Hawkins airs it out. Incomplete. Miscommunication again. Lewis, you've got more on Gene Chizik. Yeah, remember we talked with him this week, and he said, look, this is no joke and no question. It's tough going right now, but it's the great relationships with the players that are sustaining them right now. He said the coaches are bringing the kids back to the table, and they're still working hard. But again, it always goes back to that one word we've been talking about all day, momentum. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the great relationships that keeps this 2-7 and seven team going. Tom Suazo set to kick it away, Lewis, for Colorado back at his 10-yard line. His first one went 58, but most of that was on a roll. This one's a little bit better. Back at the 34-yard line, Devin McDowell. He'll get about three on the return, but that was a good effort by Suazo, the senior out of Glenwood Springs, Colorado. He kicked it 42 yards. And the middle linebacker, Jeff Smart, right there, was the one down making a great defensive special teams play on that return. The starting middle linebacker getting it done on special teams. Final 15 seconds of quarter wow. number three. Those of you wondering, final score we got handed to us. Wyoming beat Tennessee 13-7. Say that so again. Say that again. Wyoming 13-7 over Tennessee. So much for rallying around Phil Fulmer. <laughs> Iowa State, first and 10, and they've got the football. Scales has a touchdown today up over the 40-yard line. That will probably be the last play of the third. Maurice Lucas, his first tackle of the afternoon. The clock ticks down. And that ends the third. Iowa State led 10-0 at halftime. Colorado came back on the Hawkins to McKnight connection. They did it twice. They took the lead. But then it was Iowa State coming back with a touchdown of their own. As we head to the fourth, the Cyclones lead the Buffaloes. Part of beautiful downtown Boulder, Pearl Street. You can find every kind of restaurant and other places to visit. You can find a lot of things down there on yeah. Pearl Street. Yes, you can. SS Sammy right here. Yeah. <laughs> and there is Daryl Scott, 83 yards on 18 carries. This was supposed to be his breakout game, and I think so far he's probably about a B plus. Iowa State second down and seven as we begin the fourth and final quarter ball on the 41 yard line. Arnav is hit and dropped back at the 34 yard line. First sack of the ball game for Colorado's defense. 
This is a defense that had did a great job against A&M. And look at the angles that they take to keep Arnott in the pocket. He's been able to escape outside in these situations. He tried it right there. You can see that little hesitation meant, I'm trying to get outside, they're not letting me. And by that time, the door closed. They had five sacks against the Aggies last week, and that brings up a third down and 14. Walters, by the way, credited with the sack. He's got 14 tackles for the Buffaloes. On third and 14, Arnon looking, has the deep out pattern. Caught inside the 45 to the 43, first down Iowa State. Nice catch coming up by Marquise Hamilton. And Arnott absolutely threw a BB outside yeah. to the deep out route by Hamilton. Great job. Look at the head, keeping the free safety held a little bit, knowing that you need all the room you can outside. And then Arnott knows that he threw a serious seed outside. That was a rope. And Hamilton, who didn't have a catch last week, had a fumble against Oklahoma State, redeems himself this afternoon. And Arnott has down. a huge, huge gun. The question yeah. is whether he can throw it with finesse sometimes. Arnaud runs it, gets inside the 40-yard line. Down to the 39, maybe the 38-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Jimmy Smith on the stop. But we're seeing the all-around game of Arnaud. I think he's managed the game well today, Kelly. He's not done anything spectacular, oh, yeah. but he's been a great manager. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. He's managed. He's ran the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. He's also managed the run game because he has some responsibility to line scrimmage and then just get enough out of your passing game and Arnott has done all of that pretty efficiently today. On second and five Robinson hit behind the line of scrimmage he'll lose a yard and a half. Brandon Nicholas the senior out of Santa Ana California coming up with a stop. This is the last pass, and the difficulty, hold the safety over the top and then gun it in underneath in tight coverage. Wow. That's what Arnott does. That takes a huge arm, Ron, to throw that ball. Arnott's going to have to do it right here on third and long once again. Important third down for the Cyclones. Here comes the blitz. Iowa State picks it up. They've got a man. Great defensive effort by Colorado. That was a strong play by Chappelle Brown. His second pass broken up today. Darks was the intended receiver, but Kelly tipped the hat to Brown. Yeah, Brown, the, the wily veteran defensive back, schools the young receiver in Darks. One-on-one -on -one situation and absolutely no separation because remember what Colorado was doing. They were bringing Ryan Walters to free safety on the blitz, and there was no separation downfield. Darks had five and a half inches on Brown, but Brown at five foot seven can dunk a basketball. He showed some hops there. The punt. Iowa State gets a great bounce, and it'll go down to the five-yard line, 35 yards on the kick. But Colorado will have it backed up with 12-13 to play. College football on Versus is brought to you by John Hancock. The future is yours. Seventeen to thirteen, Iowa State leading Colorado. Twelve thirteen left in the fourth quarter. Now in nineteen eighty six, this was a great game. Colorado State oh, taking on Colorado. We've been hearing about it for two days. Look at that. That hair. is before conditioner, ladies and gentlemen, and that is after conditioner. When What's that our on my own lip? Kelly Stopper. What's that on my left? We got those pictures out of a post office, by the way. <laughs> You're I'm supposed to actually talk now? Yeah, well, you better get back to the game. You've been talking about 1986. We had to, you know, how you beat Colorado oh, yeah, that what year. What was the score of that game, by the oh, way? Oh, like you Let don't remember? Tell you, 23 to 7 in favor of the Rams. And, and, and the trivia there is actually that Colorado came back to have a good season. It, it turned around Bill McCartney's coaching career. You, here you know what's interesting about that? I was reading that in the Colorado information preparing for this game in 86, which was called the turning point in Coach McCartney's coaching career yes. they started the season 0 and 4 Colorado did and the first loss was to the Colorado State Rams by the way <laughs> and this is my next trip into Boulder since that victory oh that's funny you got a warm welcome though I got to burn those pictures now my good night Scott trying to get 100 yards today 
Picks up about three and a half on the play. Lewis Johnson, more on Mr. Scott. Ron, you know, at the beginning of this game, we talked about the importance of Daryl Scott having a breakout game. That's what the coaches and the team need him to do today. And I've been watching him very close the last half of the game. Remember when Alexander Robinson ran that touchdown for Iowa State? Scott sort of dropped his head and kind of lifted it back up. And so I'm wondering how he responds with them down three points. He pays attention to his body. I know this that he looked at his knee, mm -hmm. kind of pays attention to his arm. Here's a guy that went through some injuries. But right now, this guy needs to prove to himself in Colorado that he can carry this team and help him get to a win. Especially in this type of situation. Here comes the blitz. Hawkins takes a shot. Oh, my goodness. The pass was incomplete. But Fred Guerin laid the wood to Cody Hawkins. Wow. Watch this. A lot of times you have to buy time in the pocket in order to complete it on the other end. And Cody Hawkins knows that. He stands in the pocket. And those hits tend to hurt a little less if it's caught at the other end. And Devaney right there, the tight end, running down the middle of that 2D coverage, needs to catch that football. And Suazo gets a decent kick. And they're saying get away from it because it takes a good bounce. He was punting from his own end zone. Nice job. 49 yards on the kick. Gets Colorado out of a hole. But Iowa State, good field position. They lead it by four. left to be played in this ball game. Iowa State trying to snap that road losing skid. They lead the Buffaloes 17-13. Austin Arnott has been the man. 10 of 21 throwing the football for 123 yards. He's also been able to rush for 65 yards on 12 carries. And most likely he's going to have to come up with a couple more rushing plays right here. Iowa State ideally would like to keep this ball on the ground. But Colorado knows that Arnott's going to have to put the ball in the air a few times as well. Now the last possession, Iowa State looked like they were putting something together, but they came up with a goose egg. Here's Arnott. Looks, throws back across his body. He's got his tight end, Franklin. What a running room. Inside the 20. We've got a penalty flag down as he gets inside the five-yard line, but a penalty is back at the 33-yard line. I think the penalty is going to be a hold on a wide receiver from Iowa State trying to block downfield, but it will be a spot of foul. There's foul. no foul on the play. There's no wow. foul on the play. So it'll be first and goal from the five for Iowa State. Colin Franklin, his second reception for Mr. Billy Joel. And Franklin is the tight end on the right side running the delay. You get the action going right, and the tight end literally sneaks across the formation. And then he has some speed to get down the field. Not only can he play the piano, but he can catch yeah. a football and run with it afterwards. 53 yards, longest of his career. How about that mysterious flag, though? I didn't understand that. Right at the receiver that was blocking. Arnott fakes the pass, puts his head down inside the three, still fighting his way. We've got a scrum, but they'll mark it at the one. How disillusioning is this for Colorado fans? Your team has been fighting. You look like you were breaking up that play and are not able to get the ball to Franklin for the big game. Yeah, I think it's very disillusioning. The, the starts and stops, and, and Lewis has talked about the momentum swing. Mm -hmm. They're amplified when you're talking about young players. You talk about it meaning more. They get lower on one side and higher than they should on other. Robinson, left side, takes a hit. They mark him down right at the goal line. And that'll bring up a third down and goal. Well, right now, Ron, you have to tell your defense that has a lot of veterans over on that side of the football. If you're Colorado, give us one play right here and keep Iowa State out of the yeah. end zone. And then we're still talking about a one touchdown football game. Patrick Neal has come in at fullback. He'll be in front of Alexander Robinson. It's less than a yard. And it's all about penetration right there on the line of scrimmage. Arnaud's going to run the option. They give it back. And he strolls into the end zone. Alexander Robinson, his second touchdown. What a gutty call. I got a feeling Colorado was not expecting an option, Kelly. 
And I think you're right. And they actually defensed it well up to the point where Arnaud made a great decision, made an accurate pitch, and then Robinson waltzes into the end zone. A good job by offensive coordinator Robert McFarlane getting outside, knowing that the strength of the Buffalo defense is inside of the defensive tackle position. Mahoney's all-important extra point, and he drills it. We talked about the big tight end making a big play, and Franklin on the tight end delay catches it right there and wanders downfield, almost gets it into the end zone, but at the end of the day, Robert Robinson on the option is the one that has to pay it off. Come back and see if the Iowa State Hawkeyes can close it out. Nine fourteen to play in the ball game. The Buffaloes now find themselves down by eleven. They took the lead briefly in quarter number three, but Iowa State has answered with two touchdowns of their own. And Colorado seeing their bowl hopes slightly yeah. disappear. And Iowa State getting something going. Yeah. I refer to Iowa State as the Hawkeyes going to break right there. Obviously, we're talking about the Cyclones, and Gene Chizik seems to have his team believing that they can get something done and win a game on the road. Don't forget, two of their wins last year came in November, and it gave them some momentum coming into this year. Here's Josh Smith. Already has a kickoff return for a touchdown this year, and he is dropped, and the ball is down. Ernest Ferguson coming up to make the stop. Let's go back to the big pass to Franklin. He was wide open, but it was a great play action by Arnott. Well, Franklin is a tight end right here who is eventually going to leak out. Notice all the traffic coming this way. The defense thinks it's a pass to the right, and then the tight end Franklin literally delays long enough where the defense simply forgets that he's a potential receiver, and then he gets down the field. Covered 53 yards. You see the numbers on Colin Franklin. Two receptions today. Well, I'm sure they're ribbing him. He should have gotten in. <laughs> He's short of the goal line. Cody Hawkins tries to bring him back. He looks up to set the screen. And not much there. It was complete to Demetrius Sumler. And Fred Guerin, who's been Johnny on the spot, and now the no huddle offense that Colorado ran earlier this year. It's a wrinkle they put in spring, but because of their offensive line, they decided to simplify it, and they've gotten away from that. Wanted to put it more in today. Here comes the blitz. Hawkins passes incomplete. Patrick Williams, the intended receiver. Well, we've seen both Cody Hawkins and Tyler Hansen in this ballgame, Kelly. Yeah, the difference is right here. Cody Hawkins brings more to the passing game right now, which is understandable. Cody has more experience, obviously more than Hansen does, and you obviously want Hawkins in the game at this this juncture where they're going to have to throw the ball to give themselves an opportunity to get back in a position to win it. Third down and eight. The Buffs six of 14 on third down. Hawkins over the middle has his man complete. Cody Crawford's got the first down up to the 38 yard line. But the one thing that Colorado lacks are the big playmakers that allow you to come back. Cody Hawkins is going to have to put the ball accurately in places and make great decisions. 16 yard pickup. That is ties his longest and Crawford again on the reception. So Crawford back to back catches. You know, Colorado, Ron, can't count on receivers taking a short pass and turning it into a big right. play. Good they point. have to design big plays or methodically move it down the field and use the sidelines to get out of bounds as well and stop the clock. The only one that would be considered a good vertical threat is Josh Smith. But other than that, they don't have that one guy who's the burner. Second down and short. Not much pressure. Hawkins has his man complete to Patrick Williams. Who's got another first down for the Buffaloes? Chris Brown on the coverage. The tough part right now is when Cody Hawkins is hooking up with his receivers, they're in kind of a rhythm right here. You're going to have to try to get pressure after Hawkins if you can. And he completes another pass. So Hawkins on a roll here as the clock goes inside of 7.45 to play. And he wants him to hurry up. Coaches feel of Colorado feel that this is an advantage to them because of the altitude. They get, they're used to it. They're making the defense adjust quickly on a no huddle. 
Hawkins again another completion right over the middle to Sumler and another first down the best offensive drive for the Buffaloes this afternoon. And what Iowa State is doing defensively right now defensive coordinator Wayne Bold is electing to stay in his too deep coverage and not bring any pressure. I don't think that's wise right now because right now the mm -hmm. Buffaloes are in a very good rhythm offensively. Another first down. They can get another one if they get to the five. Here's Hawkins again going for six. Touchdown, Colorado's Patrick Williams. Twenty-four to nineteen is the score. Colorado will go for two. I'm sure. Patrick Williams his second touchdown reception of the year and they will not even attempt I don't think an extra point in this case you got to go for two Yeah, remember the play last time when Nick Knight the receiver right here ended up going to the corner after a rough play you can expect something similar right here some type of crossing route to make it a three point game Hawkins again two point conversion is good to Barron's. Hawkins drove his team down the field throwing the touchdown pass right here and then you go for two the rub play getting it to Barron's in the corner of the end zone Cody Hawkins is on fire 705 to play in Boulder Colorado and Iowa State's lead has been trimmed to three 24 21 let's take a look at our John Hancock future star player profile and it is Leonard Johnson of Iowa State you see what he did last week against Oklahoma State the NCAA record 319 kickoff return yards that's the good news the bad news is he had nine chances to do it <laughs> so yeah and if Colorado kicks it to Leonard Johnson right now someone needs to maybe have their head examined the other up back is R.J. Summerall. I would expect this kick to go to R.J. Summerall. Yeah, well, Jamison Davis sent the kick it away, and he's going to squib it. And it's going to go out of bounds. Wow. Oh, brother. I tell you what. It's Cody just... Hawkins can't even believe the kicker kicked it out of bounds. Oh, my. Unreal. We'll just give him good field position. In a tight game. Can you, punt, Davis, the, can oh, you he... punt the football on kickoff instead of kick it? Yeah, I think you can. But it's first down, Iowa State. We had a look into making that a rule. Now, Iowa State strategy, Lewis, what do you think? Hey, Ron, uh, the Iowa State uh, offensive line coach was working that grease board in the timeout, drawing up the scheme for the offensive line, and then he said this, we've got to be able to run the ball when we get it back. He said every first down eats up more clock, so now they want to try and run the ball and run this clock down some. Lewis, do you, you believe Iowa State believes they can win this football game? Well, you know what? That's why they play the game. That's what we're going to see. And here goes Arnaud with the pitch. And he gives it to Robinson, and he is stacked up. The clock continues to run after the pickup of about two and a half. Chappelle Brown, Maurice Lucas, you know, to make the stop. That's don't forget, the they had a six-minute drive yeah. earlier in the ball game. That's one of the intriguing things to me, though, is with young players, young teams in general, it's hard to finish things mm -hmm. and young football teams have a hard time closing out football games. Iowa State is going to be forced to make some plays right here to close it out. Plenty of time to snap. They've got five. And Colorado showing pressure a little bit defensively. They're not going to get it off. That is a penalty. Oh my goodness. You've got to look up Austin Arnod. And then he takes a shot and he is down. On a dead ball play, he is down. And Iowa State's the offensive came line. Late. Delay. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Boy, oh boy. I mean, the, the, the whistle came a little late. And it's hard to hear the whistle, yeah. obviously, if you're a player in Colorado acting like they did not hear it. And it's Hippolyte, I think, at the end of that play that puts the shot on Arnaud. Even though it doesn't account counts officially, you can't tell Arnaud's rip cage that right now. And don't forget, it only took Colorado two minutes and two seconds to go 80 yards on that last drive. Second down and 13. 
Low snap. Robinson dancing. Colorado closing. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe picking up another yard after that. Right now, Ron, Iowa State in a third and long situation. We talked about the key to the game. One of them at the top is which defense got the offense in third and long most of the time and which offense correspondingly could be more mm -hmm. successful in that situation. Here's Iowa State's opportunity. Third down and eight. Sumrall and Hamilton wide to the left. They barely get it off again. Arnod looks, throws, pass, caught after it was juggled. It'll be short of the first down. Darks got up to about the 48-yard line he needed to get to midfield. And Colorado has been blitzing in this situation. They let, elect to go with only a three-man rush. Iowa State does a nice job of recognizing, setting in the void. Good throw and catch. It just comes up. Up about a yard and a half short. Now Mike Brandner will be kicking from his 35. Scotty McKnight now back at the 10. His first punt return of the afternoon. And this is a high spiraling kick. McKnight from the 15 and trips up to the 19-yard line. Tuesdays and Thursdays versus is stirring the soup with the new original series, Sports Soup, hosted by comedian Matt Eisman. Featuring the week's best highlights, lowlights, and everything in between, we're covering the coverage with the hilarious show that sports frights. Sports Soup, all new every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10, right here on Versus. Or should we say Dr. Matt Eisman? Doctor. Actually, a medical doctor. And well, he's looks a like funny Austin, doctor. Yeah, it looks like Austin Arnott may need a medical doctor. And by the way, our, our string is alive. We still haven't shown up on that show in bloopers, right? Uh, we're give keeping us time. that going. Give us time. Colorado takes over first and ten. Hawkins, 80 yards on the last drive. This time Iowa State closes. That didn't pass the line of scrimmage, but it was close enough to a receiver. Where I right. think Hawkins is fine. And uh, you saw the officials getting together with Randy right. Crystal immediately on that. Exactly how you should do it. Communicate, and generally the officials come up with the right decision. Tyler Hansen and Matt Ballinger giving the signals to Hawkins. 426 to play. Remember the field goal fiascos oh in this my. game thus far, and that's all you need to tie this one up. Hawkins again over the middle. has got a man complete. Close to a first down is Demetrius Sumler. He'll be about a yard short, it looks. The last time in this situation, they're going to hurry up right now and probably going to go with the quarterback sneak. And Hawkins puts his head down, gets to the 30. That's where he needed to go. First down, Colorado. Well, on the last time Colorado was in that third and short, they actually threw the ball, which is the advantage of having Cody Hawkins in the football game at this point in time. And it seems like they've got Iowa State defensively on their heels. They can't bring anybody in or out. Here's Hawkins again. Has a man caught up to the 46-yard line is Scotty McKnight. Another catch for McKnight. His sixth of the ball game. And another first down for the Buffaloes. I have an idea for Colorado. Start in this hurry up two minute offense to begin the game and have Cody Hawkins running the show. Iowa State only two timeouts. That's probably why they haven't said anything yet. Pass is complete. Cody Crawford, another first down. This is reminiscent of their last drive. If you're Colorado right now, you may want to take your time just a little bit more. Now Crawford blew a tire, and he's getting it back on. Pickup of 19 on the play. First and 10 from the 35-yard line. 3.28 to play in the ballgame. Iowa State sideline yelling, come on, D. They rush four. Hawkins steps up. Past the line of scrimmage, loses the football, but he gets it back. And he'll also get a first down. Iowa State running their two deep coverage, and Cody Hawkins is aware enough to know that the void is right in the middle. Especially if your quarterback can get downfield, but man alive, when you become a runner after you've been a passer, you have to secure the football. Mm -hmm. His father watches on. First and ten, Colorado. Hawkins looks, goes to his safety valve. Passes complete to someone. 16 yard line. 2.57 left. Arnott hoping his squad hangs on. Colorado 
trying to hang on to a possible bowl game. Another four-man rush. Hawkins plenty of time. Scrambling, looking, going for six. Overthrown, intended for Cody Crawford. That'll bring up a third down, but that's a moot point. This is four-down territory. We've already seen Colorado miss field goals from 38 and 29 yards, and it wasn't even close on either one. And You've third, got to get six. Third and short, we've seen Cody Hawkins throw the football out of this down the distance before. Quarterback sneak another time, but this time in shotgun, look for the route to be over here somewhere in the overload. Now Iowa State puts six on the line of scrimmage. Four to snap it for Hawkins. He's looking left, looking for Crawford. He's got him inside the 10 yard line, down to about the seven yard line. First and goal, Colorado, 228 to play. Well, I talked about the overload to the right side, and Cody Hawkins has the awareness to know that on the left is one on one. And Crawford wins the matchup that time on Banks number seven. A good job of Cody Hawkins finding the most favorable matchup for his football team. First down and goal. Whistle blows, no run by Sumler. If you're Iowa State, you're thinking this is Kansas all over again. The play is under review. Previous play. I think they're reviewing the spot, to be honest with you. It was a catch, but I thought he was really out at about the nine-yard line. Well, that'd make a big difference, yes, but would. the way Cody Hawkins is throwing the football, I think it's actually an advantage if you give him more room, give him re his receivers more room to work. But take a look, Crawford's foot, where does it step out? Right there. Yeah, at about the nine and a half, about eight and a half. The, Yeah, I think you're right about the eight and a half, but I think it's a, a really somewhat irrelevant right now. Cody Hawkins is throwing the football so well, I think that more distance for his receivers to have an opportunity to work. I don't think it's a disadvantage at this point. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, they they are going to review it, and it may not be a disadvantage, but the fact that Dan Hawkins' squad had gained the momentum and they had this great motion going, and yeah. now you've got to take this You're time right. out. I think that's a great point. You hold them up. I, yeah, I think it's very valid because what Colorado has been doing really this second half and on this drive in particular, the last two drives in particular, is that hurry up style and Iowa State has been on their heels big time. Wayne Bolt, the defensive coordinator for Iowa State, hasn't been able to dial up the right thing. Mm -hmm. Colorado has the advantage. They have the momentum. You're exactly right. Well, Randy Crystal has the call. The ball after further review will be placed on the eight yard line. Please adjust the game clock to two minutes, 30 seconds. The clock will be wound on the ready. Okay. And here's why that you can't rely on anybody kicking field goals. Worst percentage in the country, and that includes today. It was like 33%, it's down to about 29% now. Yeah, and taking on water because you're talking about kickers that have zero confidence, and their swing just isn't right as we speak. Hawkins, three touchdowns in the second half, 221 yards. First and goal from the eight. Sumner gets stood up, but he gets to the five-yard line. Interesting that Scott is not in the ball game. They're going to the Great more powerful point. runner. More powerful runner who's shown more ball security. He's a young runner as well, but Scott doesn't have the experience in this point in time in the football game. You go to the guy who's been there slightly more times than Scott, and that's somewhere in this case. Over 400 yards offense for Colorado after 110 in the first half. There's Scott on the sideline. Second and goal from the five. 139 to play. Hawkins looking right. He's got a run. He's got a man open. Touchdown, Colorado. They've got the lead. Cody Hawkins, fourth touchdown pass of the ball game. Crawford, his eighth catch, and he's got the touchdown.
Foley Crawford's second touchdown reception of the year, but it is big. The extra point. And it is good. What Colorado was trying to do is the same play that they scored a touchdown with Jake Barron's before. It's going to go to the right. Right there, Cody Hawkins doesn't see anything. Keep the play alive. Step up in the pocket. And then Crawford is crossing the route all the way across the field. Good job as a quarterback. Find some time. Keeping the play alive. Good things happen if you extend the play. And keep an eye on Crawford, number 48. He's the third option, and it only happens if nothing is to the right. Absolutely picture perfect because of the way Cody ran that play. And the youngster, Daryl Scott, nice day today and realizes his team just got it done. How about Colorado? They trailed by 11. Hawkins led them on an eight-play, 80-yard wow. drive that took 202. All those yards coming through the air. Then he leads them on an 81-yard drive, took them 11 plays, just over three minutes. So in five minutes, he hangs 14 on the Iowa State defense. Wow, and if you're Colorado, you, you hang on and win this game, and your head coach, Dan Hawkins, you take the game ball, and you hand it right to your son, Cody, yeah. and you say, job well done. I think Mrs. Hawkins will allow Dan Hawkins back in the, yeah, uh, right. in, in the master bedroom tonight. Well, let's see if Iowa State can answer the challenge because they still have 130 to play in the ball game. Leonard Johnson still on his feet up to close to the 40 yard line. Austin Arnott has managed the game well today, but he only has 122 to work with. This is what he's done so far. He has 122 to work with, but he does have two timeouts. And so the running game is still on the table, but he's going to have to throw the football as well. He has a big arm. He has to make good decisions. Sometimes you have to drive it in low windows, probably on this drive right here. Will the road losing streak be snapped for Iowa State, or will Colorado's bow hope stay alive? First down, Iowa State at midfield. The clock stops with 116. Jones on the reception. Quickly to the line for the Cyclones. Remember, with the new clock rules, one minute and 22 isn't like one minute and 22 used to be. They need six. Complete. Down to the 40-yard line. Short of the first down is Hamilton. 60 seconds to play. Iowa State, two timeouts. Probably burn one of those timeouts yeah. after this play if they do not get the first down. On the option, back to Robinson. He's got the first down and then some. Robinson inside the 15, down to the 12 yard line with 40 seconds left. Ron, it almost looked like Colorado gave up on that play, thinking Robinson was going to take it all the way to the sideline. Good decision once again, pitch the football. And Robinson doesn't take it out of bounds. He decides to get as much as he can. A great decision at that point in time of the game. Alexander Robinson has done a great job today running the football. <laughs> he started out this game running extremely well, and he is over 100 yards rushing the football. And you're saying, well, that's not a big deal. That's the first 100-yard rusher Iowa State's had this year. And Gene Chizik's squad is fighting back. He said at the beginning of the game, you got to leave it all on the field, gentlemen, and they're doing it today. On any given Saturday, anything can happen. And last year, in one of the most stunning upsets in college football history, the Cardinal of Stanford took down the best team in the nation, the USC Trojans. Now it is the rematch. Stanford, USC, Saturday, November 15th, right here on Versus College Football. It's wild out here. And it's wild in Boulder this it afternoon. It is. 40 seconds left. Iowa State with one timeout. They've got it first and 10 at about the 19 and a half yard line. Check that the 14 and a half yard line. The quick look in. Pass is complete. Down to the eight yard line. Clock runs with 34. Jones on the reception. Iowa State hurrying to the line inside of 30 to play. Twenty to play. 
Arnon backed up at the five yard line with 15 seconds. They'll have to burn a timeout. They better the get it done running. quickly. They let four seconds go off the clock before they called the timeout. You know, it was one of those situations where you don't know whether it's a first down or not, which the clock would stop automatically. You have to call the timeout in that situation because every second is precious. Well, they've lost four seconds. Wow. Uh, I think they may be adding some time on the clock. They are. They will be adding some time on the clock for Gene Chizik's squad. I think that's what Randy Crystal just said. Yes, yeah, they had three seconds. Up to 14 seconds once again. Now, the strategy here. We saw them run the option. That kind of faked yeah. us out the last touchdown. But don't you have to try to throw this ball exactly. in the end zone? And that's what changes in the strategy right here. You didn't get that first down. You had to burn your timeout. So essentially, unless you're a big-time riverboat gambler, the running game is now off the table. Yes. You have to throw this football into the end zone. No timeouts for Iowa State. The crowd at Folsom Field standing. I think the replay booth is going to take a look at whether this was first down yardage. And I think they I have think a beef. I think they do, Because too. Arnaud was actually on the defender and rolled over the top. I would think they would need to stop this to get a full review. Well, Randy Crystal hasn't been buzzed, so they're going to run it. On third down, looking for the touchdown overthrown. The clock shows 10. Fourth down, Iowa State. Some all the intended receiver. Smith was on the coverage. So now you're in a, a dilemma. Fourth down, you need about 11 inches to get a first down, but you have no timeouts to stop the clock. What you can do is quarterback sneak, get up and kill it if you have time, and probably have two more shots into the end zone. I don't think you have time to run it right here, Ron. On fourth down. The pass caught, first down, is it a touchdown? No, they're saying he's down on the right of the goal line with four seconds left. They gotta oh, kill it. Wow, they've gotta kill it. Arnott getting guys lined up. He's able to do it and he spikes the ball as one second comes off the clock. What a play by Iowa State's Austin Arnott. Look at this again. And what you tell your guys is you need to get this in the end zone the receiver is just a little bit short on that and darks the young receiver the true freshman maybe not aware of where he is on the field a low throw makes him go down and get it instead of trying to get it into the end zone but good execution three seconds no timeouts it has to happen right here the final play of the game more what more, more than likely they've got five to snap it they've got three to snap it he better look at the clock two to snap it one he doesn't get it off and the officials didn't call it. The pitch to Robinson, he stopped. Game over. Colorado wins it, but that was confusing at the end. The game clock showed zero. The officials did not call it. The snap came at least a second and a half, possibly two, after the game clock read zero. Robinson couldn't get in. So at the end the of the day, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. And Iowa State goes to the option, I think, one too many times. They scored on this earlier and cut Colorado off guard. No catching them off guard right here. The Buffalo defense has seen this one too many times and had a defense incredibly well on this play. What a tough way to end this game if you're Iowa State. Alexander Robinson did just a, did such a great job running the football this afternoon, but he comes up short on the option and a disappointing loss for Iowa State. The road losing streak remains alive. It now goes to 16. But Dan Hawkins' squad has their bow hopes alive, and Dan Hawkins is with Lewis Johnson. All right, Ron, thanks a lot. Well, Dan, you look shell-shocked. What, what a game. Just describe the emotion at the close of this game. Well, again, our dadgum guys, I love them. We're, we're so young, you know, and you got the highs and lows, and we had a situation where just getting the life sucked out of us and trying to pump some stuff into your young guys, and they did a nice job coming back, and obviously it was a huge stand right down here at the end, and 
and I give him a lot of credit. You know, these guys keep battling, and the season hasn't quite gone like we want, but we're doing the right things. We're just young. We just got to keep coming. Let's talk quarterbacks. You started with Tyler Hansen, and then you had to put your son in, Cody, in the second half. Yeah. Talk about the way he carried this team with the four touchdowns in the second half. Well, again, both those guys, nobody likes the two-quarterback thing, right. including them and me. But they've handled it great. They've both been helping the other guy out and knowing it's his turn to go. And, you know, Cody came in and answered and just did an awesome job. So just tell me this. What's it mean to get this win, get you one game closer to being bowl eligible? Well, right here at home with these fans just going nuts. Yeah, that, that's a big deal. And we've had a tough season. And so uh, we got to keep scrapping. we got two really, really good football teams to go. And, Hopefully a little confidence, get a little wind underneath our sails, and get going here a little bit. All right, Dan, you can get out of cardiac arrest. Congratulations. Right, thank you. Okay. Back up to you guys. All right, Lewis, uh, a big win for Colorado, but a very disappointing loss for Iowa State, Kelly. Yeah, really, it's the exactly that. And I think Dan Hawkins, you know, the one guy who plays like a Wiley vet is his son at quarterback. He understands it, and the boost he gave his team emotionally, and then carried it over to the X's and O's, and you have to feel for Gene Chizik as well. Still trying to pierce that veil on the road, learning how to win. It's a difficult time. Four touchdown passes for Cody Hawkins. His team wins at the final 28-24. He throws the game winner, and then Colorado versus Crawford on the touchdown, then Colorado stops Iowa State on the goal line. Final score, 28-24. Colorado wins it. For Kelly Stauffer, Lewis Johnson, and our entire versus crew, I'm Ron Thulin. Thanks so much for watching. Now let's go to Ted Robinson at College Football Central on Versus. Well, thanks very much, Ron, along with Big Row, Roland Williams, back here at College Football Central on Versus. They saved the excitement for the last uh, seven minutes of the game. There wasn't a whole lot of football there, and more that fourth quarter was terrific. And really a chaotic ending to the game, Ro. Uh, shotgun option right is not the play you run with the game on the line. This play, play was preposterous by Iowa State. I don't know what you were thinking, but for Colorado, you guys show me that you want to go to a bowl game. You fought, you battled, scrapped all game, came back at the end. Amazing performance. And where were the officials at the end? You looked to us yeah, for sitting delay here. Yeah, delay game. And, and no review on the previous play yeah. to be sure that it wasn't a touchdown for Iowa State. Not, not a shining moment there, but a good win for Colorado. And by the way, you look at Dan Hawkins, you realize how hard it is to turn programs around. It's his third year, remember, after leaving Boise State and trying struggling to get Colorado into bowl eligibility. Baylor and Texas early today in Austin. Could Texas rebound from their heartbreaker in Lubbock? Well, they jumped out quickly, but Robert Griffin, this was the day where Robert Griffin ran for over 100. He didn't throw very much, only six completions. This one of them to Kendall Wright for a score. Well, Texas has some holes, and one of them is on defense. They're 117th ranked in the past, and they're not doing that well against the run. They got to get better defensively. They showed some promise here making a play. They kept getting picked on. They came back and responded. A pick six by Ryan Palmer there gave Texas a lead. They would not give up, and in the second half, Colt McCoy got it going. Colt McCoy, the offense is back on track. They only had six points last week at halftime. They came back and responded with an outstanding performance. He really just got the ball to his playmakers and used his feet to get the ball in the right places. Another Colt McCoy special. He throws for 305 touchdowns today as Texas coasts over Baylor 45-21. And, of course, it's the Big 12. And, oddly, the game of the night doesn't involve either Texas or Oklahoma. It involves Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. Those two teams are phenomenal. If you want to see some offense, tune in to this football game. Last year they played. They had more than 1,300 yards in total offense. My guy, Graham Harrell, had 646 yards passing. It was unbelievable. So, this is the kind of game you want to see if you like offense. It'll be the ultimate test. A lot of folks think Oklahoma State has the best defense in the Big 12. That'll be put to a severe test in Lubbock. Well, we hope you'll join us next week on Versus. We have a college football doubleheader for you. To the Ivies at noon Eastern for Princeton and Yale. And then USC still hoping to make a BCS game. They'll be at Stanford. Our coverage will begin at 6.30 Eastern with the kickoff at 7 Eastern next Saturday when college football returns to Versus. Thanks to our entire studio crew with Big Row, Roland Williams, Ted Robinson. We'll see you next Saturday for more college football on Versus.